Shaking everybody, welcome to another edition of House Divided here on Orange Buzz Live. I'm Jeff Ketchum. That is Chad Hastings. Only one of us is a happy baseball fan today. It is the way of the world. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Chad's a winner. I'm a loser. Oh, there will not be a Texas Rangers Philadelphia Phillies World Series, but I digress. It goes that way sometimes. Mm. Chad, how are you today? I'm I'm feeling it. I'm in my feels a little bit, man. Today. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm I'm thinking about you today. As soon as I saw that last night, that was that was rough. That that was definitely rough, and just can't believe two different teams had three two leads and both lost those games at home. Where we know, in the case of the Phillies, the the home crowd is so amazing and the the energy's there. These stats with the Astros, I still don't fully understand. They're the only team in the history of team sports <laughs> to be a part of a series where the road team wins every game. And I they, don't care about the Astros. And they ate both of those. Like, I don't want your, I don't want your stats. It's, it's not what I'm looking for today. It's incredible. It's just, it, it's incredible. But I, yeah, first and foremost, I feel bad for you. I also heard a story today that we're going to get into that makes me feel even worse for your household. But uh, yeah, man, I, I, We've all been through it. We've all been through some version of it, and uh, that 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 had to suck last night. It sucked. There's the word. It definitely sucked. Also kind of makes me question my need for loving sports. You know, <laughs> oh, like I, I was like, why do I do this? <laughs> that thought did cross my mind uh, uh-huh. last night. Guys, do us a solid. Hit the like button. Smash it, if you will. Uh, along with the subscription button. If you haven't done that, get notifications, all of those things. You might want notifications today because, well, I guess when Ryan Wingo makes his announcement later this afternoon at 4 o'clock, Alex Dunlap will be doing football with friends. Right. So, I like, if we need to interrupt Alex's show with Ryan Wingo committed to Texas talk, uh, we can absolutely do so. Ryan Wingo discussion. We all knew that the announcement was earlier today. That suddenly has gone from remotely interesting to everybody better find a place at four o'clock to see what happens. Five stars make decisions. People care. And we'll get into it in a little bit, Chad, but things have gotten very interesting on the Ryan Wingo front going into today's decision. Missouri people are nervous. Texas people are a little more confident than they certainly were a couple of days ago. Uh, But I did want to mention, you're right, one of the ingredients of last night, I'm sitting, I'm watching the game right here, Mm -hmm. and my daughter walks in with the Phillies leading two to one, and she wants some father-daughter bonding time. And has she watched the Phillies with you before? She has, but not – last night felt different. Last night it felt like she cared. It felt like she was ready to embrace mm-hmm. uh, being a Phillies fan because dad loves it. So we were just going from the fringe. She was ready to walk over the line and, like, be a fan. Like, she's asking questions. She wanted to find out. Yes. Okay. She was very interested to know that that my favorite player – Uh, on the Phillies, has the same name as our dog, which is a complete coincidence. There you go. I don't even remember how it happened, but the dog got named after Harper Lee within, like, minutes of us taking ownership of the dog. Oh, that's right. I thought you said – I thought your dog was named Castellano, but never mind. Okay, yeah, you're right. Harper Lee – and it's 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 so not named after Bryce Harper that any time the dog does anything bad – Everybody in the household goes middle name on the dog. Mm. Right? Harper, come here. If Harper does something bad, Harper Lee. 
Harper Lee. Yeah, my wife gives every dog a, ni- a middle name just for those situations. No. So yeah. last night, my daughter's, you can't see it because I don't have it, but there's a chair right over here. She pulled it up. She sat down next to me. The Phillies, the, the game then got tied. And then the Phillies started losing. Mm. And, you know, from my perspective, it was a lot of like, you know, I'm rubbing my head. I'm just kind of, you know, I was a real optimist last night, Chad. I really was. I was okay. like, you know, part of the theater of sports is you give up runs, you score runs. You got to come from behind sometimes. And and I, and the one thing I was very clear about is like, look, if we don't win this game, we didn't deserve it. Like, this isn't when, – when a better team plays what you think is a lesser team over 60 minutes or over the course of one game, anything can happen. But like – Hey man, kudos to Arizona. They won the series. Right. But somewhere along the fifth inning, my daughter Haven just started sobbing. Oh no. She just started sobbing. Big old tears. She was like, I don't like, I don't like to, I don't like this losing feeling. And I, I you know, I tried to be like a, a teachable dad moment where I was like, this is this is how it goes, babe. Like. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. And like, yeah. and the thing is, I was like, we got to keep a good attitude. We got to get some runs. Say it with me. We're going to score. I said, <laughs> it's funny today. I said, let me hear you say it. We're going to score some runs. Oh, look at you. Yeah. The mental and side. She, and she just looked at me. <laughs> she didn't and, say a word. And I said, come on now. You can't sit with me. If you're not going to be a little bit positive. Did she give you the head turn? Did she give you the. Oh, no, hold on. I'm going to tell you what happened. So I was like. Say it with me now. We're going to get some runs. And she looks at me. Tears rolling down her face. And says. I don't think I can tell a lie. (laughs) which didn't instill a lot of confidence in me. You know, then I started thinking, did an angel on her shoulder tell her that wow. this thing was definitely going to end with the Phillies not scoring any more runs? And it did. Um, the fact that your daughter went George Washington on the 2023 Phillies is amazing. I, I can't- don't think I can tell a lie. And that hit me, Chad, that hit me worse than the actual last out in the ninth inning. Oh, that's funny. So I'm trying to console her. I'm trying to, I'm trying to lift her spirits. And she just hit me with the dad, will you go tuck me in? I don't want to watch this anymore. I Mm. can't, I can't take it. That's a, very, that's a very mature attitude that a lot of us adult sports fans should have taken on certain. If I if I could go back and just fall asleep before games end, I think I would catch. I think I would. How many times have we watched the Cowboys and been like, well, the yeah. fan inside of me tells me I have to watch every single play of the game, that that's what a real fan does. And my daughter tapped out. She was like, and it was early too. And she was like, yeah, will you go? You come tuck me in. I, I don't like this. I don't like losing. I feel I don't. She just did not want to do it anymore. Yeah. She left me. I really wanted there to be a when I woke her up this morning, a story to tell her like, oh, honey, you went to bed. But good news, Bryce Harper hit a three run homer in the bottom of the eighth instead right. of going to like the warning track. And yeah, instead, we didn't really even talk about it this morning. Mm, but I yeah. feel like last night was, for her, her first sports heartbreak. Yeah. And it took me back to mine, right? I immediately started thinking about when I was five years old. And I really started getting into the Dallas Cowboys, like starting to watch weekly. And the catch broke my heart. I mean, it's one of the reasons, it is probably the biggest reason why I loathe seeing that play get brought up. Anytime it's mentioned, it yeah. goes right to the heart of a broken hearted five-year-old. And last night, my daughter, welcome, honey, to 
the world of being a sports fan. If she had stuck around today, I could introduce her to everybody in the chat who could tell her about Colt McCoy's injury in the Rose Ooh, Bowl more man. than a decade ago. And yeah. they don't go away. No, they don't. They don't. So that's why to yeah to process it today in the Specs chat, give us your first sports heartbreak. And if you want to include other sports heartbreaks, that's that's your your right. But as Ketch and I talked about it, I realized we do share that same first sports heartbreak. That was it. I can still remember the day, because that NFL season catch was the first season after I'd really gotten in. Like the season that that ends with uh, Raiders-Eagles. That's the first season I started watching a little bit. I watched the Super Bowl, and then I remember thinking, oh my God, if the Cowboys win today... They go to the Super I had to ask my dad, right? Do, wait, what happens if they win? Well, they go to the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl? They get to go and play in that game? Yes. I can still see Brent Musburger sitting outside doing NFL Today. It was my favorite show. One of the reasons I wanted to just talk for a living about sports. And they went outside and I flipped out. I'm like, oh my God, Brent's outside. Never seen sun hit Brent Musburger. So I'm not enjoying you go. You're with, you're going through your pain that day, yeah. and I have an off switch where I know I'm like, shut up, Chad. Like, well, no, I, and, you, and you're probably like me. Anytime, like you said, anytime it's referenced, it, it affects you. Anytime you hear those two words, it affects you. Anytime you see like a replay of anything in that day, it affects you. It does to me because it's the well, first look, one. even even. The, even little games, I am a – I don't understand the self-loathing fan that likes to wallow in loss. So, when like, it, look, I run a message board. So, when Texas loses, I, as a sports fan, man, I can't be around people who are adding to the negativity. So, I eject. I don't like to talk to anybody. I usually need like an hour. If the Cowboys lose, certainly last night, if if Liverpool loses, I need like a, I'm going to walk, I'm going to go take a walk. I'll be back. And like, just leave me alone. Like the thing you don't do is like two minutes after the Cowboys lose or right after Liverpool loses or the Phillies lose. Don't, don't hit me up with like all the stuff I didn't do around the house. (laughs) Like, like yesterday, like, Right. You, you, you got to know me, like, give me an hour and I'll be okay, but I need an hour. The thing I can't do is go to like orange bloods of like the Cowboys or Liverpool and just wallow in it. I need complete right. detachment. And one of the things that made last night hard was that my daughter added to my grief. I don't know yeah. that I was quite ready. You know, I was, I was, trying to process myself. Oh my God, what is this going to mean? How am I going to feel? And then suddenly my daughter's feelings were invading my feelings. And look, you know, as a dad, you don't get you, your feelings stop mattering when a daughter's feelings get in. Right. Right. Cause that's, that's where you got to realize, Oh God, I have to be a parent here or I'm a fan, but I'm a selfish fan, you know, like, Right about the time she was in her feels, I probably wanted to focus on my feelings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, "Daughter, what are you doing? Why, why, you know, why are you crying? You haven't been watching all these games. I have." Right, and see, that's what's that's what's great about my girls. Whatever was going on, Astros Rangers. I was in the room watching the game. They were in a separate room watching Crime Scene Kitchen, or you know the or survivor big brother a show like that and just checking their phones that's the kind of fans they are they stay at a certain level where it doesn't hurt them so your your child took that all important but also dangerous step of caring yeah well i don't have that in me uh kudos to her though because i think she's dealing with it better today um than than i am oh yeah although Oh, should we do it now or like, can we just, wouldn't it just make everybody laugh? Let's go, let's go through some of these chats real quick. 
Okay. And it will cleanse with the video because the video is fantastic. <laughs> Catch found a video of a guy interviewing Philly fans walking out of that game last night. It's priceless. It is coming up. Let's get through some chats. We actually have a super chat from Oscar. We appreciate you, Oscar. Four ninety nine. I was only seven when Colt got hurt. Oh God, he's a baby, Chad. Oscar is a baby. So while it might be my first heartbreak, David Freeze, oh, bombing one to right field in the World Series against Texas killed me. See, catch that's one of my trigger names right there. You me cannot too, say you can't say his name. You can't say his name, and I'm sure our producer, Blake, the super producer, same way. I can't hear that name without it Before freaking out. Before he did that to the Rangers, he did that to the Phillies. Yep. We he did share, everybody that, that run. We share the same year. You hate that name too, right? I hate it. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Hate it. Yeah, Oscar, we're just going to take that name right off the old chat page here. Uh, here's some others. Hold Let's... on. Let me answer this. Okay. If this is such an easy answer, the Rangers, I am not, I am not one of these. I am a much more bitter and jilted lover than to be able to root for the team that knocked me out. I am not one of these guys who's like, well, no, I got to root for the Diamondbacks so it can feel like there was a per. No, 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 no. I mean, if you had a reason to root for him, that's different, but no. There are some people who feel like, well, at least I'll be able to look back and say that we lost to the team. No, I don't want to be the team that lost to the team that won it all. You know what? I want the Rangers to win. So well, then when it's over with, I can just tell myself, well, I guess we weren't going to beat the Rangers because the Rangers were better than the team that beat us. So I am all Rangers. Screw the Diamondbacks. I've been wanting to curse out Blake Aaron Little all day today. And Aaron is a good guy, but I'm a petty, angry, not nice person sometimes. Mm. And the only thing that I think makes it a little better is that, Chad, I'm fully self-aware about it. That's a good thing. You know, like I vent and direct my anger and angst towards others, but I am aware of it, which yeah, leads me to thinking it a lot and not saying it a lot. Like, I've wanted to tell Aaron, who's a really nice guy, who's a producer in the mornings, uh -huh. who covers our Texas baseball coverage along with Zach over at Orange Bloods. I've been all day, I've been wanting to be bad Philly fan. I, yeah. I wanted to just say, fuck you, Aaron. But you know what I haven't done? You haven't done it. I haven't reached out to Aaron at all today. I'm just, yeah. I don't want to tell him congratulations because I don't mean it. Ah, I see. You're going that far. I'm petty. Look, I'm telling you who I am. Yeah, and then well, what I, I try to do is just pocket myself into a little corner where my negative attitudes and negative thoughts don't reach out to other people. I'm just letting you know the things that have gone on in my head today. None of these are actual actions. Yeah, no, I get you. Like, there's a, I told my wife and daughter, congrats in 17. Congrats in what was that? When did they win it? 20 last year. I told them congratulations last year. And I told myself if the Astros had won game seven, I would have congratulated both of them. Am I absolutely certain that would have happened? No. And did my wife and daughter congratulate me? Hell no. They did and not. Look, when the series started, I told Aaron, I am not wishing you good luck. I don't mean it. Right. And that's honesty. That's what we need. You need honesty. I, you know, I'm not trying to be a negative person or a bad person or a mean person or anything, but like, I'm, I feel like I'm usually very self-aware of myself. If, if I had a current psychologist or shrink right now, they would absolutely agree and say, Jeff, you are in your head too much. Yeah. Sometimes that's good. Like now where I actually often usually never say the thing that I'm thinking because I, I have full awareness of like how petty and, and, and how mean-spirited and, and generally ugly the commentary would be. So I suppress it. I think it, but I don't say it out loud. Although now I'm getting to do a show and for five minutes, this feels a little bit therapeutic. Yes. No, there can be some therapy. Is there something you need to say to like a seven-year-old Aaron that was posted to uh, Twitter yesterday here? <laughs> Is that who that is? That's him as a kid? Yeah. 
Oh. Look, man, seven-year-old Ranger Backs fan can eat a dick, okay? <laughs> uh, I'm not worried about – he's happy. Did His team in the World Series. What does he need to hear? Something positive from me. In <laughs> fact, the only thing that's made me feel better today, Chad, is this video of Phillies fans oh my God. just out of control. And they are – a lot of that stuff's in my head, and I never say it out loud. They have no problems just releasing it. They have no – you're right. Now, James, we see your super chat talking about some of your big sports heartbreaks. We'll get to that. Let's go ahead and give everybody the video. Let's go <laughs> so ahead. Good. Let's we'll see what people got to say. We yeah. had a whole field for two games. Two games. And you let them come here and beat us. Phillies need to sell Trey Turner. That guy's a fucking idiot. We went farther without that guy. Fuck the Phillies, honestly. Trade the whole fucking team. This team fucking blew today. I want to say that I'm fucking depressed. I had to ask nine people for this fucking cigarette. The Philly fans, we always stink. It just, Disappointment. Yeah. Oh, man, that was just straight garbage. This sucks. I hope they never fucking play a baseball game again. Swing. Fire Topper. Topper. What's up, man? Feeling like I want to go lay in traffic. Fuck all them bitch ass motherfuckers. I couldn't get a hit when we mother. Um, I love how we spent 700 mil for guys to go 0 for 12 combined. Let's go Jets. <laughs> Fuck! It's a good point. I'm, I'm feeling good because, you know, we still got the birds. Go birds! Go birds! Hit the fucking ball, man. Come on, really? Yeah. Hit the fucking ball. Overpaid animals. Fuck that. Hey, wait, where'd you get this banana? From a homeless guy. Hey, how do we feel about dancing on my own as a song moving forward? You gotta cut it. Time to retire. Find something new. Still fires up the crowd. Well, I'm pretty sure it, it didn't work this year, so it's got to go. Who fucking on? I'm crying instead of dancing! I get shitty ass fucking song. They need to ditch that shit. I don't want to hear that song ever again. How about you it's shut it's up? <laughs> oh my god, I don't know what my favorite part is. There's so many contestants for my favorite part. But I think my favorite part of it, Catch, is when full-grown men <laughs> act like wackadoo sports fans. We that, to me, is so normal that it doesn't really register. Hey. It's when children <laughs> and women do it. That, because my, in, in growing up, I wasn't around a lot of either women or children that are flipping out about sports. So to listen to that first younger kid, yeah, you'll fuck the Phillies, and he's walking off <laughs> yeah. that kid. And then every woman in that video fascinates me because I did not grow up around those kinds of women. Again, my wife and daughter, they stay on the fringe, man. They never let themselves get that mad about anything. Now, my wife will scream a little bit about Matt Canada right now. She's a Steelers fan. But outside of that, you know, she keeps it pretty much under control. Somebody said that was me after Texas OU. Sandman, we understand. So the three best parts of that video, you nailed the first one. It's the, it's the second person. On, by the way, it made me feel too good. We're watching that again before the show is over. That is a feel-good laugh riot for like a minute and a half. We will have to watch that again before the show is over. Yeah, the kid the is first great. kid that just... F the Phillies. Yeah. And he's like, he's like 10. Right. Exactly. There's no way that kid's 12. Not a chance. There's, there's the woman who complains that she had to ask nine people for a cigarette. That's a good one. Yeah. She's great. And then the random, hey man, where did you get that banana from a homeless man? From a homeless guy. Yeah. There's, you're right. Those are really the pillars on which that video oh. is built. By the way, can you imagine being the kind of fan in a kind of city where you measure anger and bad feelings on how many people you have to ask until you can bum a cigarette? <laughs> That's so great because you know the cigarette community. I'm sure it's still this way, even though a lot of vaping has taken over and all that. The cigarette community is so tight-knit. Can I bum a cigarette is one of the easiest questions to answer. It's always a yes, unless you just don't have it. Yep. But it's never because you don't. Ha it's not because you just choose not to do it. It's easy. And the fact that she had to go nine deep. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 serious. It just. Oh, my God. 
Let's get James' super chat here, and we can jump into a couple other things. But we will be talking sports heartbreak today since Ketch went through it last night. And now because of his Philly fandom, he put his daughter through it last night without realizing it. She experienced her first sports heartbreak. Our man James jumps in, super chat 499, and says two biggest sports heartbreaks, Crabtree Ketch, Gideon interception drop, and two, the Diamondbacks, ironically, beating the Yankees in 01 after 9-11. James, thank you for that. That had to be a tough one if you're a Yankees fan on uh, on that side of it. That was a, that was a wild World Series. Very un-American, the Diamondbacks franchise. Yeah, I was on the un-American side that year. Dude, happiness. The, here's one of the things I do catch that I'm not uh, I'm not, not proud of, but if I'm watching a sports event like that, a big moment, as long as my parents aren't around, because I would never do it around them, I will flip off anyone representing the other team when they are shown on the screen as the, the celebration's going on. Um, so, as, so as the Diamondbacks won in 01, every time Joe Torre was put on the screen or any Yankee, I flipped off the screen in my buddy's house. It's the first time you've ever, I've ever felt like you were worse as a human being than I am. Like there's, there's some evil to that. And, <laughs> and, and, and can I tell you for sure that I didn't do that the other night to representatives of the Astros after game seven? No, I cannot tell you that I didn't. Did not. <laughs> some things change. Some things will forever remain the same. Okay. Just, look, let's take a hard, it was like a hard left in Albuquerque. Okay. We can get back to my pain. Seriously. It feels very much like a therapy session. So I'm okay with the therapy. It's free. Yeah, we're here for you, Catch. We're here for you. But the Ryan Wingo thing today is really interesting. He is going to make his announcement in three and a half hours. And when I first talked to you earlier today, I'll take everybody watching the show right now behind, behind the curtain a little bit. We were talking about things we were going to talk about on the show. And after we had talked for about 10 minutes, I was like, look, Ryan Wingo announces today. We, we definitely need to do like a Wingo something. Right. I later called him back and said, hey, <laughs> this Ryan Wingo thing's turned into something, and like we need to get to it probably pretty close out of the gate. And, and so here we are. The latest on – and I'll let you pepper me with questions, Chad, and we can take super chat or regular uh, chat questions about this as we go. By the mm -hmm. way, I do like this. Not cool, not, Chad. Not cool, Chad. I know. How I dare know. you? Not proud of it. I wouldn't. Again, I wouldn't do it in public. I wouldn't do it in a bar. I wouldn't do it in a packed bar. And I don't do it to people's faces, like face to face. I'm saying it's on the screen. He flips off make it, the TV, which is a different level of pettiness. Oh, it is so bad. It's so bad. I don't know why it, it it shows up every once in a while, and I don't know why, but it does. <laughs> it did the other night. I'm, I did. It happened, dude. It just did. <laughs> uh, I wish. I, I, and and let me just state: I wish that it didn't make me feel as good as it makes me feel. All right, continue. Okay, so. Sukumel hits me up. By the way, I guess I should turn my Slack channel on. I had to reboot my computer to, for us to do a show today. Yeah. Um, it's the Phillies virus. I mean, he was asking me, it, you know what? Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, he asked me, like, hey, have any of your people heard anything on Wingo? I'm hearing that, like, there's some Texas confidence. Matter of fact, I'll just read you what he wrote me. I always like just being really specific and letting people know. He's like, um, some late Texas smoke on Wingo. It's like, let me know if you hear anything from so-and-so. Hmm. But Missouri people are concerned. Okay. So that's kind of where it starts. A little tiger, tiger uncertainty today. Today, yes. Yeah. And I hit him back immediately and was like, well, I talked to somebody on Monday and that person felt like the NIL situation between between Texas and Missouri wasn't close. That Texas was way out in front in terms of NIL opportunities, pure financial upside through NIL, Texas had an advantage. Okay. Um, but that person didn't feel like 
that was going to be enough. And specifically, it felt like, well, the mom wants the kid to stay close to home. She wants him to go to Missouri. Hmm. So, like, that's that. And I'll be honest, since after Monday, you know, it's Wednesday now. Yesterday, I didn't even think about it a whole lot. I've just, for the last week plus, Missouri, 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 I check in on Monday. It sounds like Texas and Wingo had had communications. Maybe as recent as Monday. I don't know the exact timing. I'm sure they've talked probably every day this week. But the sense I got was that they were fighting an uphill battle. They gave it the good old college effort. And that was that. So then Jason hits me up with that. I reach out to a source of mine. And I said, Missouri people are worried. And this person's response back to me was, and they should be, end quote. And that's kind of where we are now. I I, I asked a few more questions. I didn't get a lot of specificity. Where is that word? I don't know why that word is so hard for me. (laughs) I I don't know why I can't say it. Um, But the general theme was if NIL matters at all. And, and and we joke in the recruiting industry, like people say things like NIL doesn't matter. And then in the last two weeks before they make a decision, it starts to matter. Right. Uh, I always tell the story before NIL, when it was like an in-state school versus an out-of-state school, even if that kid was committed to an out-of-state school, usually about 48 hours before signing day, there is a heart-to-heart where mom, I think it it do- usually dawns on mom. My baby's going away from me. Mm-hmm. It's a 10-hour drive. I'm not going to get to see all of your games. And so throughout the recruiting process, there's usually a whole lot of, I want him to make his own decision. He's got to be a man. You know, he's got to do what's most comfortable. Those are the things that parents say. And then about 48 hours in the old days, pre-NIL, somewhere along the line, usually like over Sunday night dinner, the Wednesday before signing day, or the Sunday right before signing day, it'd be the, are you really going to go away from your mother? And And then the guilt. For the first time, really hits a young man like my mom is crying after all this time of telling me she doesn't care where I go. Now she's telling me. Right. It finally hit her. It, it hit her and she hit her. her. Yep. I don't want you to go away from home. And that's the way it used to go in the old days. Now, in the last couple of years, what we've seen is, and think about when. Um, I mean, we've seen the Micah Hudson commitment hit, um, the defensive lineman that committed to LSU, where it was like the there was a lot of his re- – even Colin Simmons, to a certain extent, a few months ago, there was a, a, a real thinking of, well, that kid's recruitment doesn't really begin until November when, when NIO comes to the forefront. I think – If Texas were to win Ryan Wingo today, which would be strange because the sense was he set this whole thing up for an early announcement specific for today because he wanted to commit to Missouri. So if something in the last 48 hours changed, it's the realization of like, okay, let's just talk about this. There's more money to be gained by going here Versus going there. And it could be that the Texas situation is so much better that who knows. I haven't flipped my future cast. It's still with Missouri. I have not had anybody, Chad, tell me it's definitely going to be Texas. Nobody has said that. I'm, I've am i literally told you everything that I've been told, which is, A, as of today, Missouri should be worried And B, I think Texas feels like on the big NIL stage, they have an advantage there. And Missouri's got proximity. Missouri's got family. 
Missouri's got a lot of things going for it. Texas has NIL right now. Okay. And it will be interesting to see. Like, we may learn a lesson today in terms of what's most important. Um, and I'm intrigued. I, 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 like, like I said, I haven't changed my prediction. The smart money is probably still with Missouri. But I will tell you, this specific source that I talked to isn't like flamboyant guy. He's not. I, I don't know that I can even remember a situation where he wrongly projected open confidence like that. So mm-hmm. it, it's caught my attention. If it had been almost anybody else, maybe I would have been like, eh, whatever. And look, we do still have people who are saying they think absolutely it's going to be Missouri. But it, and this could be just as easily Wingo wants to create some suspense because everybody's assuming it's going to be Missouri. And this is just recruiting stuff by a teenager to try to get a little entry going into the announcement. I mean, that could easily be it. I'm just letting you know that I sense confidence from an area that on Monday, what there wasn't a ton of confidence today. There seems to be, and it's enough to make me, to make me suddenly really interested in four o'clock. All right. So tell me if you agree with this chat and these percentages, Travis throws in and says, don't ask me to do percentages. Okay. 55% 55% Missouri, 45% Texas, really close according to analysts. Would you put it at close to a coin flip? I can't do that. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Like, I'm telling you what is what has happened from my side of things. Got I it. don't know how to quantify what all of that means. Okay. Um, when it's over, if he picks Missouri, I'll go, okay, well, that was really interesting – Coming from a source, I've always said this particular source I don't think has ever been wrong before. Mm-hmm. And this source didn't make a, a, a proclamation, right? It, it didn't say right. he's coming to Texas. It was a little bit and, – and then I'll be honest, as I've dug for more information, <laughs> he went silent on me. Right. Now, that may be a clue, though. Like, when it's over with – and I know that doesn't do a whole lot of good right in this very moment, right? Because – there will be people who are like, well, you're just saying some of this because then if you know what the outcome is going to be, you can point to whatever you want to and say that that person was either right or wrong. I agree. I agree. But I'm not trying to do it for like selfishness sake, right? I'm not, this isn't like I'm trying to be right. I'm telling you, I don't know. So I am i can't say I don't know. And then three hours later go, ha, I told you. I mean, that's, what I will say when this is over with is like either there's another example of why I pay really close attention to what that source says, or I'll go, huh, that was curious that it went down the way that it yeah. did, but I, I'm not changing my future cast yet. Hell, let me look at my phone. Let me make sure that nothing else is no new texts have come through. Okay. I'll let everybody know. Uh, and Cotton says, ain't buying it, have moved on. Cotton, I get it. I get it. All I can tell you is I literally, Chad can tell you. <laughs> when we spoke at about 9.15 this morning, right? Because I was yep. able to lay back down and sleep for an hour. Yep. The very first words out of both of our mouths were not, let's do a Ryan Wingo segment first hour. Nope. It barely got mentioned. I said, hey, Wingo's announcement is... Matter of fact, we haven't even dipped into the stuff that we really talked about doing early in the show, which is very UT football centric from a Big 12 championship standpoint. We'll get into that, certainly. Um, I think the plan is to get Jason Sukumel on at 120. I'll double check on that. So we'll continue the Wingo conversation. Yeah, Jason just confirmed 120 is good. Beautiful. So we'll continue with the Wingo stuff. And you guys can hear Jason and I have a conversation about kind of the back and forths that we've been having today. Because when we look at Jason, so Jason posted an update on Orange Bloods. Let me pull it up. Jason posted at 7.30 this morning. And he was like, hey, 
There's some buzz coming out of St. Louis last night that Texas might be making a last push, checking. I'm told there's not much confidence in Austin on Texas being the pick. I'm fully expecting Missouri to be the pick. That was at 730. Mm -hmm. And then at 1020, he was like, I will say this, dot, dot, dot. As of just now, there's a little bit of concern on the Missouri side from what I'm gathering. Blah, 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 blah. At 11.38 is when I posted my update. And then at 12.08, so this was 30 minutes ago, and Jason and I, he didn't, I didn't even, this is news to me because I've been in my fields over the Phillies since 12 o'clock. <laughs> at 12.08, he said, yet another source indicated indicating increased confidence in the pick being Texas as of lunchtime today. Hmm. So... I don't even know who he talked to. Okay. So let me see if I can go back and see. Very interesting. Here's you know what? He didn't even put it in Slack. He didn't tell me. Okay. Interesting. Real quick chat here from Christopher saying, I think Wingo surprises us today. I can't take any more Texas disappointment. Christopher, we will see. Four o'clock this afternoon is when that happens. And by the way, Catch, just for the record of it, is there a specific place people could – check out the Wingo decision. I mean, they can be on orangebloods.com. They just... I don't don't know, honestly. Right. I think 24-7 sports might be broadcasting that today. Um, But basically, they just need to follow all you guys. Yeah, or, you know, we may may hijack Dunlap's show. Ah, that's possible, too. We might say, Alex, nothing... (laughs) You're not going to get more viewers doing anything else than you would being the announcement place. I mean, you and I've done these before. Um, yeah, we did. By the way, Sukumel's writing to me right now. I won't be able to reveal to you guys who gave him the Texas vote of confidence at 12.08. Right. But I don't know. Uh, hopefully. Unless he's like, I can't tell you. But I can see in Slack it says Jason Sukumel is typing. So I'm giving you play by play of my Slack communication of which if he answers me, the play by play will stop. (laughs) That is exciting. That is exciting. Okay. So I can, I can, I'll, I'll, I'll actually tell you what Jason says up to a limit. All right. He wrote just a very vague response from dot, dot, dot. Uh huh. He's no longer throwing in the towel completely. So, and this would be a Texas person. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. A, a, a source that Sukumel would go to on the burnt orange side of things. Gotcha. Okay. So that is the latest on Ryan Wingo. Let me just make sure we don't have, yes, there's no other chats that had come in in that regard. Uh, four o'clock is when that happens. Obviously, we'll be keeping up with all of that. And like Ketch just said, Jason Sukumel coming up at 120. Just real quick here, Ketch. Let's talk chicken fried steak. Let's get your update. Do you have a plan on getting to Hayes City Store and having the chicken fried steak? Can I get a little, a little update? Well, hold on, Blake, come in for a second. I need Blake to answer this. All right. I need to catch up on our emails with with with, with the Pine House. But what day mm-hmm. are we circling for the Pine House meeting? I believe the Friday before Kansas State. That would be next Friday evening. November so 3rd. I will probably be in that Thursday then, Chad, and do yes. a Thursday, Friday back to backer. Okay. So there you go. You're thinking maybe a Thursday Hay City store? That's exactly what I'm thinking. That's exciting. Okay, so by next week, by next week, this time, he'll be getting ready for it, but it sounds like by next weekend, by the time Texas plays Kansas State, Catch may be able to tell you what a Hayes City store chicken fried steak tastes like. And I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. My wife is a chicken fried steak freak, and it's her favorite on the planet. My mother is a food snob, very sensitive palate. She loves all she'll she all kinds of different things. The chips and salsa, the Can you give me an example of her food snobbery. Like, well, my my mom is my mom's one of those people that'll eat a lot of different things. So it's not like she has a her palate is not snobbish, but she's eaten a lot. She's snobbish because she's tried just about everything. Okay, so give me an example of her of her snobby. 
It's not liver and onions. How so? My, my mother is the kind that A, will order liver and onions, which is to me insane. That's just not something I ever think about. Because there's I, so many other things you could order on the menu. Oh my God, right? There's 50 things I want on a menu other than liver and onions. She's that type of woman that will go after some liver and onions and then break it all down for you. I've watched my mother call Travis from Hay City Store over to the table to tell her which to tell him which things on the table remind her of her mother's cooking. Oh wow. Like my mother has done that to Travis at Hay City Store. Okay. That's your QR code. I'm so F glad I asked. Yeah, FM150 out in Driftwood. Uh my mom is I'll put it this way. My mom's not the type to to over to overdo those things if she's not feeling it. Right? She's not just going to do it to do it. She because the first time she saw Travis, she wasn't gonna see Travis again. She met him, you know. He's a yeah. nice guy, but for all she knew, it was a, it's a one and only. She didn't necessarily know she was gonna go back, but immediately they loved Hayes City Store. You will love it too. Uh, check them out in Driftwood, and uh, if you're on Facebook, follow them at Hayes City Store because they always put out the. I got to get Travis to send me some great pictures of some of the burgers and some of the food. Uh, so we can get that uh, get that to you as well. But Hay City Store is amazing. And it sounds like we may be able to get catch that chicken fried steak next week. Very cool. Very, very cool. All right. So uh, we got the Ryan Wingo update. Also, let me clarify real quick something on a chat. We were talking about my propensity to sometimes flip off the other team on television. A chatter has it wrong here. They say plethora of, of pinata says, and as an Aggie, Chad does that a lot. Most Saturdays. No, 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 no. You're misinterpreting. I never flip off my guys. So it doesn't matter how bad my guys play. I'm never flipping them off. I'm flipping the other side off if my team wins a massive game. So have I had a lot of those lately as an Aggie fan? No, I have not. And the one massive game I could think of, I was actually there live watching them whip Oklahoma. So you couldn't, that. if it had gone the wrong way, yeah. I'm not I'm not flipping off the big screen at Jerry World just because now I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong, but I didn't I didn't do the flip off there. So just to clarify how the flip off thing sometimes works. So yeah, with the Aggies, no, no, I say a lot of things, but I don't flip my own team off. I don't boo my own team. I don't flip off my own team. And I do not treat them like those Phillies fans treated Trey Turner and and Harper and all those guys. I don't walk out of a stadium bitching and moaning about my team. I I take it and then go home. That's Oscar, what is C date? Commitment, commitment date? date. Wait, I used wait. to think of it as D day. Yeah, not C date. But yeah, yes. C date is today, Oscar, four o'clock. Yep. And I saw in the chat it does look like he's going to announce on the twenty four seven YouTube platform. So you could go there. I won't begrudge you for doing so. Uh, but I would say, you know, I'll talk with Alex in between shows and say, Hey, I know you got your own thing planned today. And I don't want to tell you how to program your show, but if you want as big a numbers as possible, yeah, <laughs> it'd be a Ryan Wingo reaction show uh, to some degree. There you go. There it is. Thank you for that uh, super chat. Oscar, who we learned earlier is a little younger than maybe we thought Oscar was. Um, and uh, yes, he was talking about sports heartbreak. Uh, and when it uh, when it first happened to him, we got buy or sell coming up at one. Got an interesting birthday buy or sell for catch. Does he know who this person is? We will find out uh, at around one. Catch, you want to talk a little Texas football and uh, kind of what's out in front of him here? What do you like, or well, do you want to go back? Ask to you a Wingo question before we. All right, go ahead. And I no, I don't know if we can fit in the the conversation that we want to have. Okay. In nine minutes. All right. If I'm just being completely honest, like I've maybe, but yeah, that I'm shocks me. That shocks me because normally we're able to really get through stuff quickly. Exactly. <laughs> Again, a little bit of self awareness. Yeah, no, that's good. You got to know. I, in eight minutes, you know, hey, never mind. I'm not even going to make a bad sex joke. I'm just going to ask you the question. <laughs> just going to ask you the question that I wanted to ask you was, you are a um, you're a third party in this Wingo thing. Mm -hmm. So with no skin in the game, what's your what's your vibe? What's your personal read 
on what's happening on Wingo Wednesday. All right. So here's what I here's what I'm thinking. I'm fascinated by the power that these kids wield at this point of the process and how they might be using it. So I'm thinking of if Ryan Wingo is one of those guys who likes to use social media to his advantage, use the media to his advantage, use insiders to his advantage. What I'm trying to think of is whether he knows what he's doing in December or not, how could his decision today affect both sides? We've talked about this stuff before with others, with other recruits, but knowing the advantages he has on either side, I'm wondering deep down, does he want to be able to tell his mother what she wants to hear? But he's going to pick Texas today, so Missouri will kick that NIL up a little bit more? I mean, it's the best way to extort money out of Missouri. Or does he want to say Missouri today and just see if that te- if the Texas group can start collecting at a, at a rate that would make him go, oh, okay, well, mom, mom. The burn orange stuff is this much stuff. What do you think? So that's kind of where that's kind of where my mind is. And I don't know if Ryan Wingo is one of those type of guys or not, or if he's just a straightforward, you know, a straightforward like doesn't answer Jason Sukamel's calls ever and dev, doesn't care about insider stuff and and all that. But it is pretty wild to me that Missouri's success on the field, I think, plays into this for him. I would definitely think it's better than it feels, you know, the sense I'm getting is it's going to be better than a coin flip, you know, better than a coin flip towards Missouri. But we all know the kind of power that Texas has in these type of discussions. I'm going to say, I'm going to say maybe there's a little bit of smoke to it. Um, And there's got, there's got to be something there. But I just wonder how much he is playing with this. You know, how much is he playing with the story, I guess, is what's on my mind right now. I think, so what we haven't seen from Wingo, if this is just about drawing attention to the decision, we haven't seen the recruiting playbook. We haven't seen him tease it on his own socials. We're not seeing him retweet photo like comments from Texas fans and then a bunch of comments from Missouri fans and then right. a bunch of AM fans. And then like, where am I going to go? I haven't even made like, There's not been any of that. Multiple logo tweets. It hasn't been a whole lot of that. He yeah. did wear Texas gloves to his most recent game a week ago. That's about as close as it gets to thirst trapping Right. The fans of the schools that are recruiting him. I hate to be a cynic. And look, if this kid commits to Texas today and I say what I'm about to say, people will be like, you insulted the kid's integrity and honor. And I don't know that I believe that, but of all of the things that we just talked to, he's allowed to have an agent. He's allowed to have financial advisors. He's to have adults, including his parents instruct him on all kinds of things, right? Anything and everything. The best way to get more money out of Missouri is to lean into Texas. Hell, commit to Texas. Right. If Missouri is telling you they can get you, I mean, we talked about this with, I, I'm, I'm positive it was part of the Colin Simmons discussion, right? If you think one, if one school's told, told you that, they can give you, let's say, half a million dollars. And another school is indicating that they can give you more, but you want to go to the school that's offering less. The only way to find out if you can truly get more from the school giving less is to commit to the other school and see if they flinch. Yeah, because uh, assuming the kid – for, I'm, I'm assuming that the kid likes his mother and the mother likes him. And it's a good relationship. If we assume that, then deep down, it'd be like, oh, no, it'd be, of course, it'd be cool for me to play in front of my mother. Right. And then it's just a matter of what's the gap. If this is Missouri and that's Texas, would he go to Missouri for that? Or does he need that? He doesn't even need to get to there. Just exactly. here. Right. It's a mom, 
Missouri's telling us, and, and and he didn't even have to tell mom. In the end, he could just pick the Tigers. And then when mom asks, so did they give more NIL? No, mama, it's all about you. It's all about you. I love my mother. What are you talking about? I, I'm not about money. I'm not about money, but deep down you'll know, yeah, they well, did. That's what up. I loved about Brandon Baker so much is during the recruiting process, he was like, yeah, man, NIL is going to matter a lot, period. Right. And if one school offers me more money through NIL than another school, then right then it's you like, know that that that's the way it goes yeah you ever had a friend who's trying to decide between like two big time jobs big time jobs and while you're having the conversation you never talk money no i've never had that ever I haven't even asked right he's like oh no we didn't even talk about it. it's like no no he's trying to decide between a big time job in new york or a big time job in philadelphia well what's he gonna get paid in each city well he said that right away. Like, of course, that's going to be a thing. With this one, I get a hundred thousand in a car, and with this one, it's only ninety thousand. But I get this and this, and they're putting me up in a house, and I don't have to pay for whatever. Like, that's of course, that's what you talk about. It's the same thing for these kids. It's just we don't feel like it's the same thing. Well, it's still taboo it to talk about out loud, as if nil is not legal. But it's, I mean, in Missouri, he can literally he. Missouri is different than the state of Texas in that in the state of Texas, he can't play high school football and collect on NIL. Right. And in sept on September 1st in the state of Missouri, they made that legal. Right. And that that's a great point because now catch it's not, that's a, it's a bit of a different NIL discussion, right? Texas can say we'll be able to do this, but we can't do it until way out here. But I mean, in theory, the state of Missouri has allowed it. So let's say Ryan Wingo and his family are having a conversation. And they're like, what if mom or dad says, you know, what would be fun? What if we just went away for Christmas this year? Forget about the family. What if we did like a family trip? Oh, you mean to like Dallas? Yeah. Well, no, no, like. A real family trip. Oh, we could go to New York City in Christmas? I've heard that's amazing. And they're like, well, no. I was thinking like Paris for two weeks. <laughs> right. What if we went to the Eiffel Tower for Christmas and we just took the whole family? And dad was like, well, I don't know if I want to pay for that. That sounds expensive. And somebody was like, well, the new NIL rules in the state of Missouri indicate that we can accept as we can start accepting NIL money. So what if we saw, took an NIL deal in October and they gave us like a quarter of a million dollars and we used some of that money to go to Paris for Christmas? The state of Missouri has set that up. So that if Ryan Wingo and his family want to go to Paris for Christmas, mm -hmm. they can sign NIL deals now that would allow them to do that. In the state of Texas, the kid's eligibility would be destroyed. Yeah, He'd now, no longer be able to play. Just to clarify, Catch, is it all right under current rules for his family to accept what you just said in an NIL deal, go to Paris, then in December – him just signed with Texas. Well, that is one of the million dollar questions literally that exists is what commitment level, you know, when I was signing guys to NIL deals, um, one of the things that I put in the very first contract that I sent to the university of Texas. So this might've been like Jordan Whittington's contract. Cause I think if I remember correctly, Jordan was like the first football player that we signed. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I had in the contract was the contract is null and void if Jordan Whittington is no longer playing football for the University of Texas. If right. he hits the portal, A, he doesn't have to worry about contractually being obligated to still do X amount of videos a week or a month with us when he's no longer at the school. But so it's, it's like a get out of jail for both of us. If he's not, if he either goes pro or um, 
he transfers, but he's no longer in the Texas football program. Or if some, he did something bad and yeah, then it's left the program. Yeah. But see, uh, but what I guess what I'm saying with your example, if all they're looking for is that trip, the trip is over and well, done. But with hold on. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is that that got turned back because that's considered pay for play. Mm-hmm. So all of the contracts have to be approved to some level. And I think that in, there wouldn't be able to be a, if he's not playing for Missouri, he has to either give us back the money or whatever. That can't be in the contract. Now right. they found creative rules where it's like, well, if he can't be in the city of St. Louis on December 20th of 2020, you know, like they, you can put, I, I, I know that they found loopholes because mm-hmm. lawyers are creative and that's, that's why they get paid money is to, to find these ways to like bend the laws into the gray area. But as it relates to like, could he sign a deal with a bank, you know, American bank in, in, in St. Louis is kind of giving him a quarter of a million dollars in NIL. It can't say if he goes to Texas in December, we want our money back. That's not right. how it works. Yeah. No, that's that, again, there's that's where the power kind of does the, the, the power that lies with the kids and their family in this situation. It, it could turn into just a modern day Eric Dickerson and the Trans Am story. Right, because the the old version of that story yeah. was well, A and M can't complain about a Trans Am because it's all against against the rules. This is there are rules set up, but in the end, if the kid ended up picking Texas, what's Missouri going to gripe about? Well, we paid for the kid's family to go on this trip around Christmas. Well, so well, and it wouldn't necessarily even be that. It would be that they used the money from the NIL to do whatever the hell they wanted to with the NIL. So yeah, you know, I wasn't even suggesting that the trip was paid for. Right. I'm suggesting that they close an NIL deal so that they could use NIL money yep. to, to do anything they want. You know, I use the Christmas trip as an example. It could yep. be a house. It could be sister's yep. education. It could be anything they want that money right. to, be, to be for. The point is they can accept the money and sign the deals now. Right. And, you know, when Texas gets into an – and look at us. It's after one o'clock. I said we shouldn't do the Texas thing. We look, we leap back into Wingo because I thought that we could contain that to eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, is that what you thought? I had no idea. I, <laughs> no, never I was gullible. Hey, I'm I am still in mourning, Chad. So you have to I understand. You have to give me a day of mourning where my brain doesn't work. Yeah. But all I was th- all I was thinking is if we can finish by ourselves by the time Sukamel appears. We'll do that. We'll do that. We'll be fine. The last comment that I'll make, if I can remember, because now my brain is slightly scrambled. Oh, it's just that, uh, you know, in Texas, you know, the, the word on the street, and so I can't say this is factual. It could be unfactual, but the word on the street is that when Texas and Texas A&M do battle on a kid. Uh-huh. The Texas, and this could just be Texas people talking trash, and it might not be like this at all. But the sense has been that if A&M is competing for a kid, the money that they're talking about is available right away, which technically, depending on the state where that kid lives, but if it's inside the state of Texas, that would be illegal. Right. And you couldn't do it that way. What Texas will claim is that, you know, they just tell the kids, you got to wait till you get to campus. But once you get to campus, all of the money that we told you will be there. You're going to get, you're going to get paid. It's all there, but there's a little bit of a waiting game. Mm -hmm. What's unique about Ryan Wingo is there's no waiting game for him. It is, truly unique to the state of Missouri, even kids in California are allowed legally in the state of California to have legal representation and to discuss NIL right away. But it doesn't mean that they can start collecting NIL right away, but they can discuss deals legally. In Texas, you're not even supposed to do that, so which right. leads to a whole lot of, like we're talking about Micah Hudson, and AM and Texas Tech are talking NIL between those two schools. There's a whole lot of nodding and wink winking because technically you're not supposed to le- legally you can't talk 
specifics. Mm -hmm. So technically, it's got to be also very vague, but it's completely different in Missouri, completely different in California. It does make covering a lot of this difficult because you have to learn the state laws <laughs> of everything right. in, that Texas is recruiting. And consequently, Texas, from an NIL perspective, knows, depending on where a kid lives, how much easier it is to cut through the bullshit and just, hey, if we're talking to Brandon Baker's people, we can just, he can just hear the, the, the plan. Whereas if we're recruiting Anthony Hill, we've got to talk in a very nebulous, vague manner. Okay, yeah. I'm done. We can, we can jump into buy or sell. All right, after the one o'clock hour, thanks to those folks in that Specs chat of over 330 folks in there, specsonline.com. Get all stocked up for your watch parties. Get that Specs app on your phone, and you can get stuff shipped to you as well. Uh, get it delivered. All right, catch, buy or sell. Who goes first? I got no questions ready, so by all means, you go first today. Fair enough. Let's start at the party. Buy or sell number one. Georgia wins the cocktail party, and they cover 14 and a half. Sell. So, Georgia wins the cocktail party, doesn't cover the 14 and a half. I'm kind of thinking you may be right there. I think that might be a little bit of a battle. Uh, we, by, we, real quick, we still haven't seen Georgia post Brock Bowers. Yep. And when we Got start it. talking about covering two plus touchdowns, they weren't overwhelming teams earlier in the season. It wasn't quite as emphatic as we've seen it. This is the first post Brock Bowers game. It might take them a couple of weeks of get, playing games yeah. And figuring out what does it mean to not have your super weapon. Yep, I think you're right. All right, buy or sell number two. Let's go to the Texas game. Brooks has 115 plus and Baxter has 85 plus on the ground Saturday. Sell. Something tells me that's like, say, say it again. You said 85 Brooks, and what? Brooks 115 plus, Baxter 85 plus. Sell. That's okay. almost 200 yards. That seems doable, but maybe not quite in 60-40 fashion. Gotcha. All right, buy or sell number three, game itself. Texas wins and covers 17 and a half. You'll disagree with all that money coming in for BYU. Sell, so, and we'll get into that conversation in a little bit, but right now I like BYU to cover. Okay. Uh, buy or sell number four catch. You did not watch any NBA last night. You were too sad about the Phillies. Sell. So, can I get off of Kevin Durant rant for a second? Sure. So I didn't watch any of the Lakers and the Nuggets, but I had a couple of live prize picks going. Mm -hmm. And I was in a position to win 120 bucks. Uh -huh. if, if Kevin Durant had scored 22 points last night on prize picks. Okay. He had 13 at the half. I watched some of the third quarter. So this is where I did watch some NBA last night. And then I was like, you know what? 120 bucks isn't worth staying up for. I'm kind of tired and I'm just, I'm kind of bummed out. So I turned the television off and went to sleep. I woke up in the middle of the night and it was on my brain. By the way, uh, I had the weirdest dream last night. Remind me to tell you about the dream so that you can psychoanalyze it on the show. All right. But it involves me with hair and driving in an expedition with no front end of the car. It's a wild dream. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> I woke up this morning, grabbed my phone, was like walking around the house naked, trying to find my phone. I wanted to find out if Kevin Durant scored his 22. Right. He scored 18. Ooh, so close. Not even that close. How the hell did he only score? How does Kevin Durant only score five points in a half, in any yeah. NBA half? I think I'm like 0 for 30 on prize picks plays involving Kevin Durant in the last two years. Come on, KD. I think, honestly, I think catch what, what I learned last night because I had a small prize pick. I took the Steph Curry thing and I just paired it with a LeBron and I was just like 30 bucks, right? That's all I was looking at. I needed LeBron's combined points, rebounds, and assists to go over like 38.5. I thought, oh, yeah, 
that's fine. First game of the year, he'll want to show off. He ended at 34. So, and, and then when they started talking about, well, you know, they're going to do load management on LeBron. Load management. He hasn't been in for this many minutes. I'm like, oh my God, I forgot about load management. I don't know how many prize picks I'm going to do on the NBA moving forward. I got to be honest with you. I may stick to football. I've had more success was, with football. It was one of these Taco Tuesday flex, like where they give you like, it was like a little discount. It, it was a discount. Yeah. It was KD on the discount. And if it had been KD 26 points, I wouldn't mess with it. Right. It was KD in 22. No, you, you, bit, you bit just like I would have. I would have done the same thing. That's crazy. Uh, and finally, catch, let's see if you know. Buy or sell number five. Today is Nancy Cartwright's birthday. She is the voice of an iconic cartoon character. You can tell me the name of the character. Bart Simpson? Very good. Well done. Well done. Happy 66 to Nancy today. Yes, Bart Simpson, the, what is he supposed to be, five years old? Voiced by a 66-year-old woman. I love that. Wait, is Bart, not Bart's older than five. Seven, eight. What's he supposed yeah. to sing He's a single number though, right? Yeah. Bart's supposed to be about that, yeah, five to... Yeah, but he's not writing on the chalkboard at five. You're right, you're right. I so promise what's not to... Yeah, yeah. Not okay. to what, seven to ten? Somewhere in that range? He comes across as a third grader. Third to four, yeah, okay, somewhere in there, yes. Elementary school kid voiced by a 66-year-old woman. I love that. All right, catch, buy or sell, what do you got? I guess technically she is still voicing... Oh, I'm yeah. not mistaken. I also think she's politically complicated. Uh, buy or sell. Like well, I, I so saw something involving her like within the last year where I remember people saying like, oh, no, I can't enjoy Bart Simpson anymore. So uh, Bart's, like Bart's sure politically complicated. So that fits. It's no doubt. Uh, yeah. Buy or sell. Number one, the Phillies are out. The Diamondbacks are in. And as a Rangers fan, you kind of like that. Uh, by, I was a little, a little, not intimidated by the Phillies, but certainly wary of the power they have that crowd. Um, but I got to tell you the pitching of the diamondbacks, you just learned better than anybody. That matchup is wild. The Rangers are going to have to win it with bats, but the diamondbacks want to win it with gloves and pitching. And that's always the way I lean if I'm picking a series. So I'm concerned about the diamondbacks, but overall, yes, by, I'm glad it's not the Phillies. They felt like uh, they were going to be a tough train to de to derail. The Rangers are going to win this game, this series in five. The really? Phillies, the Phillies let the, the the Diamondbacks aren't that good. Okay, like look, when the Phillies lost to the to the Cardinals, I don't want to say the two words, but that guy and the right. Cardinals. Yep, got gotcha. you. It, it felt like when that happened, I was like, this team's actually pretty great, and 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 I get ultimately why they won the World Series. When the, when the Phillies lost to the Giants during that same stretch, actually it would have been the year before, I was like, it's legitimately a great team. I don't like that we lost. I think we're better, but that's a great team. I don't think Arizona is either better than Philadelphia, although they were better over these seven games, and I don't think they would scare either the Astros or the Rangers. They performed well. They've been performing well. But they shouldn't beat the Rangers. In fact, you know, this will be a 2-3-2 two, two series. I'm not going to be shocked if the Rangers win the first two. I never looked at Arizona's pitching and thought that they, as, as much as they dominated the Philly bats towards the end of the series, I never looked at those guys and thought we were facing pitching that couldn't be touched. I just thought we didn't hit well. Uh, even last night, we were making really good con. We had a lot of balls to the warning track, right? And and even Harper will tell you he missed a three run homer in the eighth by like, in his description, a tenth of a second. He just missed a ball, right. and you know that happens. But I never felt overwhelmed or dominated. Believe me, I've had that feeling before. That's not Arizona. Uh, buy or sell number two, right? To hell with it. Ryan Wingo picks Texas today. Yeah, why not? Bye. Where there's smoke, there might be fire. Let's let's make it interesting. That's Bye. that's Chad trying to get top mod status on orangebloods.com. Come on. Uh, be, Come on. be Mr. Popularity by just saying positive things only.
That's it. That's uh, it. Buy or sell number three. You played the video of from from um, Britney Spears's audiobook narrated by Michelle Williams, and you can confirm Michelle Williams does one hell of an Aquafina impersonation. Buy. I didn't expect that. Uh, and I'm not sure if I would have been able to identify it had you not said it before, but with that idea implanted in my head, yeah, she did sound like Aquafina. Absolutely. It's, it's you know, in its own way, it's even better than the Phillies video because yeah, when it, you get the Aquafina yeah. thing in your head, it is impossible to shake. Um, and now, ir- ironically, catch it did make me want to read that book less. So whatever for whatever that means. Well, that's not good. Yeah, that sequence made me almost feel dirty enough that I don't <laughs> want to read the book. Like it just was like, wait a minute, do I really want to read a book full of that? Those kind of stories? I don't know if I do. Uh, buy or sell number four. No matter how this thing shakes out with uh, Ryan Wingo, he's going to get more NIL money from Missouri out of it. Um, I think that's a buy. He's going to get more NIL out of somebody. Uh, but yeah, let's let, let's say Missouri. I think that's going to be the play. I'm saying that's the idea. I'm going to go with the say Texas now, sign with Missouri later, and in the interim, Missouri's going to step up and say, oh, you're not getting out of this state. It's not happening. I mean, it's not implausible. And finally, buyer sell number five. I woke up this morning to hearing that James Harden was returning to the Philadelphia 76ers. And it occurred to me that when he plays his first home game this year in Philadelphia, Mm -hmm. it'll be Philadelphia fans still reeling from the loss to the Diamondbacks. Buy or sell number five. They're not going to wait until he's gone. Philadelphia fans are coming after James Harden the moment they first see him on a court this season. Man. I think it might be a buy based on the anger we saw in the video. The anger. I mean, I know the Eagles are playing well and everything, but yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to buy the, the, those, the Philly fans don't seem to hold feelings very well. They and do neither not. does James, neither does James Harden. So I don't think that's going to be a good combination. They do not do a good job of compartmentalizing like no. Philly's feelings, James Harden situation. Yeah. Those two things are going to bleed over. I think it's actually going to be really ugly. And I think, it may end up being the thing that James Harden is most remembered for in his career because Rocket fans didn't really come at You know what I mean? Like, as he's pulled this I want to trade stunt a couple of times, mm-hmm. Ben Simmons never got back on the floor for the Sixers ever again. Harden's going to play for the Sixers. And right. I think they're going to eat that dude alive. I think... I agree. Well, I think he's going to tap out before the trade actually takes hold. That's just my feeling. That's how we do buy or sell. Thanks to all of you in the specs chat, by the way. We will get to some uh, some questions uh, from the chat, super chats. But it's time to bring in Jason Sukumel from orangebloods.com and talk about this Ryan Wingo situation a little more fully. To be quite honest, didn't have plans on having Jason on the show today. And then – Jason has been, I kind of went through it on the show earlier that we've gone from, ah, there's a little bit of smoke, but don't necessarily think it matters a whole lot to Missouri people are worried to, you know, Texas people are kind of confident to, hey, I got another indication that Texas might be a little confident on this. We're now less than three hours away. I'm not quite sure how to handicap where we are, what's going to happen at four o'clock. It's a bit of an unusual one. Yeah. I mean, I think I can fill this whole segment without having to take any questions. If I just kind of trace the storyline of Ryan Winko, man, like um, I'll try to give a nutshell version, but you know, he was, he's been pretty open. Um, I've been hearing literally for probably about a year that it would probably come down to Texas or Missouri. Everybody's mentioned, Miami and AM and Georgia and all these other places. But people I talked to in the St. Louis area are like, nah, it's probably going to be Texas or Missouri. Wingo maintains he's open all along. Missouri kind of crept out in front. Uh, then Wingo visits Texas for the Wyoming game in September. 
I think we put our future cast in not too long after that. We're hearing behind the scenes that he's telling multiple people on that visit, hey, I'm going to be in Austin. This is where I'm going to be. He then visits Missouri a couple of times, including a couple of weeks ago. All momentum shifts to Missouri. You know, he's been steadfast that he's going to commit in December. Well, then he moves up his timeline. Everybody's like, okay, then he's definitely going to commit to Missouri for a lot of reasons. You know, he's moving it up to kind of give them a shot in the arm in recruiting. He can sign an NIL deal if he commits to Missouri and get money right now. He doesn't have to wait till he's in college. That new law they put in states in Missouri. All dude, catch. I sent you a message on Slack last night, 10 o'clock, 10 20, whatever it was, PM last night. I started hearing some Texas smoke. I checked on it with a source that would know and I trust. And he's like, zero confidence on the Texas side. This was Tuesday night at 10 20. This morning, I'm like, okay, it's still Missouri. I post on Orange Buds, hey, he's announcing it for. I still think it's Missouri based on what I heard last night. Start to hear a little more Texas chatter. We, you check, I check, and people are like, yeah, man, um, Missouri's losing more confidence. Texas is gaining confidence. Um, you know, and I see in the chat, everybody's like, let us know, Jason, let us know. Like, guys, I don't know. Now, I am leaning towards Texas, I'll be honest. While I was on on hold waiting to come on the air, I started writing a Texas commitment story to have it ready and in the can for 4 o'clock. But uh, I'm not fully convinced it might not be a wasted effort because this one has gone back and forth. I mean, literally zero confidence. That was a direct quote last night at 1020. Zero confidence from that to now there's confidence in Austin that they might have surged at the end to take the lead. So just a wild recruitment, man. But it's been a fun one to track for sure. <laughs> Hey Chad, before I before I just wanted to ask this question to Jason. Yep. Any recruitment that you could ever quite compare this to? Like I in mm. the world of the NIL, you know, yeah. And and guys trying to dress up their commitment announcements and add intrigue. This doesn't feel like Colin Simmons, right? That no. had some back and forth in the final couple of weeks, but we knew, I think, the day that the announcement was coming in, by the time we got there. We felt there really wasn't a ton of intrigue. We knew, we thought we knew what Colin Simmons was going to do. I'm having a hard time comparing this to something else. Yeah, and especially the possibility. It's usually the other way around for Texas, right? They're trying to keep guys from leaving the state. This this may be bucking the trend of a guy leaving his state to come to Texas. We're usually covering stories from the other perspective there. Um, you know, I don't know. I can't think of anything where it like kind of mirrors that recruitment, but I don't think this is going to be anything we're not going to be seeing in the future. You know, I was joking with a, a Missouri reporter and we're bouncing what we're hearing back and forth. And we were both like, Hey, welcome to five-star recruiting in the, in the world of NIL. Right. Where I mean, listen, right now I'm moderately, maybe mildly confident in Texas's chances, but you know what guys, it's one thirty. We got two and a half hours. The way this thing's gone, <laughs> Missouri might come back in with who knows what kind of a NIL offer. And this thing could swing back in. So, I mean, this is going to be one truly, I think at four when he announces, probably 4.15 ish uh, central time. Someone asked, yes, it's four, four o'clock central time. Um, I mean, there will be some suspense. And I mean, even if I'm told definitively, hey, it's going to be this, like, I'll still have a little bit of doubt in my mind until we see him announce. Have any recruits been teasing, Texas recruits teasing Not anything at all on social media? Uh, not today that I've seen, and honestly, not for several weeks. I mean, when he came down for that Wyoming game, you know, I'm told he told key people, and then he also told other recruits, like, hey, I'm coming to Texas. Since then, it's been pretty silent. So, Jason, the idea I threw out earlier was, you know, if he picks Texas today, it would then kind of force Missouri to rethink rethink the wallet a little bit and say, well, I guess we got to really jack it up. Um, does, I mean, does that logic make any sense to you in terms of, we know what his mom wants and his family wants and, and proximity and everything. Does he dig Missouri enough that that could be just the play here? See if he can get a little bit more money, but ultimately, you know, he wants to stay home and, and play for the state school. Uh, it's a good question. And I am hoping to talk to Ryan after he announces, uh, rivals will have someone there. So and I'm going to talk to Ryan. If not him, I'll talk to his dad and get some of these. Sometimes right. it's easier to get those answers after the fact, of course, but you know, it makes sense, but 
I've heard Missouri has a huge NIL offer for Wingo. So it's not like he's hurting in like when that first came out today about, Oh, Hey, there's some Texas smoke. My thinking was one of two things. Okay. He's just trying to drum up suspense, right. To make it more excitement. He is a teenager after all, or B he and his family, maybe at the guidance of his family are trying to drum up some more NIL money from Missouri. I still thought it was going to be Missouri when I was hearing these, these things, but um, you know, if he winds up picking Texas, yeah, I could see Missouri making a counter offer. I have been hearing for several weeks that Missouri has basically kind of told the people inside their football offices, Hey, whatever it takes to get Ryan Wingo and these other in-state five stars, they've already got one, uh, whatever it takes, you know, break the bank if you have to. So, you know, we know what Texas's power is in NIL, but people are acting like Missouri's not presenting a pretty uh, sizable opportunity. And that's not the case. Missouri's already presented uh, what I'm hearing is, is a really nice NIL opportunity. So, um, you know, I, I don't know, man, it's again, man, this thing's been so back and forth. I'm not sure that today at four o'clock ends this recruitment, if we're being completely honest. On the flip side of that, Ryan's kind of a no nonsense kind of guy. The times I've talked to him, he's pretty straightforward and doesn't play a ton of games. So I do think there's a large part of him that probably just wants to put an end to this thing today at four, but Hey man, money talks and BS walks, right? So, uh, November, December, this one could get a little crazy. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, on the NIL front, you and I've been hearing the same things. The last 48 hours kind of remind me of the Braylon Addison, no Jordan Addison, excuse me. I got Addison receivers <laughs> in my brain confused. Uh, does he, anybody even remember uh, Braylon Addison, uh, Jordan Addison, right? So the rumors were $2 million from USC. And, and Colin Cowherd was putting that out on national radio. And so everybody was talking about this is the amount of money that he's going to make. And then when it got to be brass tax and NIL dollars were really discussed, Texas, I had always heard, felt like its NIL package didn't include – gray area, fuzzy math, uh, sign a bunch of autographs. And if you sign enough of them, you'll get to a certain amount. Like there was a, maybe more of a better guarantee. Mm -hmm. And I've wondered in the last 48 hours when I've heard that suddenly, cause I'd heard what you heard, like by any means necessary for Missouri. And maybe this is just put this into a place where Texas wouldn't even want to compete because you know, God, if you bring the guy in for what he's going to make from Missouri, maybe it throws off everything that you're doing with other guys because now there's a new benchmark for what a guy can get. But I didn't get that sense on Monday. I got the sense that, Texas, that, 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 that there were people with knowledge of these things that felt like Texas had a better NIL offer and that it might just not come down to the other offers good enough that it's not drastically different but that Texas has the better NIL situation. If he picks Texas, I'm going to be, whether it's right or wrong, and he probably would never admit Texas just is going to, I'm going to make more money in NIL at Texas. That's why I'm going to Texas. That'll never be said out loud, but it's what I'm going to think, Jason. And it, may, it makes me think that maybe on this NIL thing that we've heard on the Missouri side, that maybe there's some smoke and mirrors in terms of how the deal's put together where there's just a little more certainty with Texas. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm we're literally scatter shooting off the top of the brain right now, us having this conversation, but I was a little surprised on Monday to kind of get a sense that if Texas loses this, it won't be NIL. And now today suddenly Texas feels like they're potentially in a better situation um, and you hate to use the term, like, but someone used it to me to Texas money whip him. And I'm like, eh, eh, I, I don't know if I like using that term, but um, I mean, listen, man, it, it is what it is in today's day and age, NIL, especially for a guy the caliber of Ryan Wingo. But, you know, what are we talking here? One's offering, I mean, these sound ridiculous, but these are the kind of numbers that get thrown around. If one's offering 700,000 and one's offering 750, well, that's maybe not the biggest yeah. difference in the grand scheme of things. But, if one of them's get pushing seven figures, you know that that's a can be a big difference. So, um, you know, but if one's offering seven fifty, and you don't have to do anything but do some charity, yes. And the other one is seven fifty, 
and you get to 750 if you sign 15,000 autographs and you know, you do this, that, and the other, a lot of, yeah. Yeah, like a lot of gray area. Yeah. And, and I don't know if that's the case with Missouri, you know, we're speculating, obviously. And I just, I've been told, uh, like, sounds like you've heard the same thing. They have offered a, a nice uh, NIL package, but you know, and it's, listen, I don't want to say it's all about NIL. Ryan Wingo has really liked Texas for a long time. Again, when he came down for that Wyoming game, I talked to him at the airport when he was flying back, uh, raved about the atmosphere, the crowd, the drone show was all he wanted to talk about that night. Um, you know, he loves Sark. He loves the offense. He likes the uh, opportunity with Texas losing probably a bunch of receivers from the team this year, the opportunity to come in and play early. So, you know, we're not going to be naive and say NIL isn't a factor, but Texas also has a lot of other uh, selling points in this one that are keeping it in the race. That drone show is damn cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Jason, let, let's get really silly here. Let's say Ryan Wingo wants to know just how high Missouri will go and just how high Texas will go. If he gets kooky and he grabs a third hat today, which one is it? <laughs> I don't, man, I don't even know if there is a third one. Um, is there a third hat? There's you know, my question. Let me look. Who is he him? He's got a final six, and I had to like seriously, I had to go back and look at it. It's really such a two team race, but it's Texas, Missouri, Georgia, Texas AM, Tennessee, and Miami. If I'm picking a third, it's probably a distant, distant third. I'd probably go with Georgia or Miami, maybe even Texas AM. I don't think it'd yeah. be Tennessee, but I think it's one and one A, and then the, the other group is way the behind. The thing is, Chad, Georgia and AM have the power. To make a move if they wanted to. Right. That's what I was going to say. If you if you really are, if it's about that, Wingo should grab one of those two hats and really see if he can freak everybody out. Look, I'll, I, be, I, you know, I, I'll be interested to see if he does have all six because nobody's even talking about the other four. I bet yeah. he does have all six. Yeah. And listen, he's um he's very smart and intelligent. And his he's got two brothers that were recruited. His dad played or his dad signed with Michigan State. I think he ended up going to JUCO. So he comes from an athletic background. He had a brother who played at Arkansas, one played at Missouri. They're no strangers to the recruiting game. Um, his dad's a, a very savvy guy. I've talked to his dad a bunch. He's a cool guy, but he's very savvy. He knows right. what he's doing with recruiting. So I would bet there'll be six hats on the table today. Uh, if they have, if they play the hat game, and there might be some shenanigans, you might be right. Well, and they have a brother that's playing college football right now. Like this is a more educated family in the way of modern day recruiting. But what happens in IL related once a guy's on campus as well? You know, there's there's a lot to all. It, I'm telling you, I Jason, I didn't wake up today. Even about Ryan Wingo, I told you, I, Chad and I were on the phone for like 15 minutes. And at the end of the conversation, I was like, oh, and by the way, Ryan Wingo is going to announce today. And like, we should, we should at least talk about it. Let me and tell you my life, my life in a nutshell. Um, I've been, you've heard this catch, Chad. I've been solo dadding it. My mother-in-law had a knee replacement. My mom's, my wife's been staying with her. So I've been solo fathering it. And for the last week, I think that'll end tomorrow. But my, my dad, who my parents live close, are like, hey, do you need any help picking kids up from school or getting them to school? That was this morning. I was like, Nah, God, it's going to be an easy day. That kid's going to Missouri. So, oh, so about, about a couple hours ago, I had to call my dad. Like, Dad, you still available to, to pick, a, pick our youngest <laughs> up from middle school at 420? Because I think I'm going to be glued to the computer. So thank God for parents and having fallback options. But, yeah, I'm like you, Catch. I woke up this morning thinking, nah, I'm yeah. good. I'll just I'll watch it on my phone from the car pickup line, and I'll be fine. <laughs> but, now, uh, just, so I, just so I make sure I understand this, Jason, is your dad savvy enough and have savvy enough friends <laughs> that when they say, why did you have to go pick them up, he can just say, oh, it's about, it's Wingo. It's wing, yeah. Wingo, Wingo, I don't know if his friends Wingo care, but, Yeah, I don't know if his friends care that much, but my dad certainly, uh, he certainly follows it. Yeah, for sure. That's great. Your dad follows He didn't used to, but he does now just because he – knows it's my job and he takes yeah, he's he's all over orange bloods and dad i hope you're not watching but uh, i gave him a, an account years ago and now i'm like he's always calling me out like hey i saw you wrote this or catch wrote this and <laughs> on Mars, uh, <laughs> what about this i'm like oh my gosh like i'm gonna up oh, blacklist <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you kick your dad off the site <laughs> yeah. uh, we have a super chat question from uh, jose rodriguez this is a good question Jason Ketch, how can things change drastically within the last few hours before a commitment? Wouldn't the recruit just reschedule to get more time? Yeah. Jason, just so that everybody knows a little bit of context here, 
That's actually, this is a really good question because the, the announcement today is happening today because there was a sense that he was going to commit to Missouri and that this would be more momentum for Missouri. He can start mm-hmm. an NIL. Like the, the original thought process was announced in December. And for Texas, the thought process was the later he waits, the better. Him moving up this announcement wasn't supposed to be good for Texas. And then Jose's question, I think, is is a fair one to ask. On this announcement that was supposed to be Missouri putting a ball on a tee, how do things change in the last few hours? It's a great question, Jose. It's, it's, it is such a good question that uh, literally I was talking to a Missouri reporter this morning. He was talking to people inside the Missouri program, getting their vibes, and that's when their confidence was like, uh-oh, hey, we're, we're starting to get a little bit worried. Literally, the thinking at that time was he's either A, going to announce for Missouri in order, A, announce for Missouri, B, postpone his announcement, C, possibly pick another school. That was the least likely of uh, of the three scenarios. So there was some thought this morning that he would go ahead and just push back his decision. And you're right. It makes a lot of sense. But, you know, you got to remember also these are non-binding decisions. Um you know, if he commits to Texas, he could change his mind by the end of this week and still switch to Missouri and start collecting NIL money uh, as early as, you know, if he commit as soon as he signs a non-bonding thing with Missouri, he could start collecting NIL money. But all signs of him moving his recruitment or his commitment up from December to what, October 25th, all signs pointed to Missouri. So if it's not going to be Missouri, maybe push it back a little bit. It makes perfect sense, Jose. It's a great question. People who are actively involved in this thing were wondering the same thing, if he might just go ahead and delay it. But it's all uh, all hands on deck, and it's, it's staying the course for a uh, 4 o'clock announcement today as of right now. A couple of more Super Chats. Uh, Jay Burke says, can Texas set up and immediately pay out an NIL deal with Wingo, with Canes, for example, since he lives in Missouri, and will be receiving the payout there, or is he subject to Texas law? Uh, I think... You know, I don't know if it'd be subject to Texas law, but I know the Missouri law is you have to sign with an in-state public university yep. before you can start getting NIL. And when I say sign, they could sign a paper napkin. It doesn't have to be a binding uh, letter of intent or anything. So, um, but yeah, per Missouri law, he would have to so- sign with Missouri, maybe a financial aid obligation that's, that's non-binding, but it has to be to a public in-state uh, university. Um, Texas, you know, that, that, that brings up a good question because like California kids can sign NIL deals, but I do think it has to be with California, uh, based, um, representatives. So I don't think that would be, that would work in terms of Texas setting that up and starting to pay them right now. Yeah. Yeah. I always thought the thing with the California thing was that you could, they could negotiate, but I still think they have to end up on campus or there's gotta be something that triggers. I don't think it's quite like Missouri and Missouri's not like Texas at all. It's 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 hard to honestly keep up with all of the various. The angles. Missouri one was so unique, and I mean, it was so obvious. I mean, literally, they're basically saying, "Hey, if you're an in-state player, you better sign with Missouri." You know, or, you know, if you want that NIL money, what other public in-state? There's like what I think St. Louis University, or there are a couple small ones, but it was basically a law set up to say, if you're an in-state player, and if you sign an agreement with Missouri, you can start collecting NIL money. But it was a a very specific. Uh, worded the way it was worded was very specific to the University of Missouri. Jason, Jay, I just got, oh, go ahead. Sorry. One, one more real quick. In the old days, it used to matter if the kid announced at the school or not. Does it matter anymore nowadays? Does it matter with you for Wingo? Like the thought would be if he walks out at his school, he's probably taking picking Missouri. But yeah. if it's at some random location, it could be Texas or somebody else. Does that still matter to you or not? Uh, not really. You know, it's a good point because sometimes you feel that there might be some like in-state pressure from his classmates or his teachers or whatever. But these kids nowadays, man, uh, first off, they have different mindsets. They know they hold the cards and they hold the power for the majority of it. And um, I don't think they cater to to that kind of pressure. I've seen a lot of guys, you know, just buck the, the, the pressure from people around them and go out of state. So these kids with social media and everything else, they're made to be such celebrities and given such power early on. I don't think they really cave into those kind of pressures. Yeah. They probably like it. Maybe some of them might. Yeah. 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 By the way, um, I'm, I've literally looked at every single prediction model on all of the, 
I've looked at rivals. I've looked at 24 seven. I've looked at on three. Everybody's all in on Missouri. I don't see a single Texas prediction. And, but what I do find interesting. So if you go to, if you go to rivals, Mark Passwaters of our AM site made a prediction yesterday. Uh, and Adam Gorney was most recent uh, early, earlier in the week. He picked Missouri as well last week. I go over to on three and on three he's got someone who made a prediction today. Someone who made a prediction a few days ago, someone who made a few predictions a few days ago before that. But if you go to 24 seven, nobody in the network has touched Ryan Wingo's name with a production, with a prediction hmm. all day or all week long. And they do have the announcement that usually makes me think that, you know, to be given the announcement, they don't want anybody spoiling the announcement. So it is interesting to me that nobody from 24 seven is in the Ryan Wingo prediction business. Um, Cause I've been one, I've been waiting to see if anybody throws in a late Texas pick we're almost two hours away now. That, that hasn't happened bad, yet. Though. Like I'm slightly favoring Texas, but not strongly. And I'm probably just going to let mine ride. Listen, if I get a call in the next 30 minutes, say, Hey, you know, I've like, it's pretty much hundred percent. Then I'd probably go ahead and flip it at this much. At this point, I'll probably just let it ride. And I've got mine in for Missouri. If it ends up being Texas, then I'll, I'll, I'll happily take the L on the uh, future cast and <laughs> let Orange Bloods be in a good mood and not have to monitor a meltdown. So, yeah. Hey, I just asked somebody if I should future cast Texas. My last question didn't get answered. Maybe that one will. Uh, <laughs> well, hey, I'll just put this out there like, um, and I'll say it because he hasn't responded, but uh, I asked the dad the same question. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I'm like, hey man, it can't hurt, right? His, his dad's really cool, and usually he never doesn't respond. Um, uh, sometimes it's not super quick, but yeah, I was like, hey, would I be wise to have a text? <laughs> <for you?" laughs> that's that's a great way to ask it, you know. If we if we'd all know been able to do that back in the day, that would have been a good thing. Hey, would it be a good idea for me to have a suit ready on prom night? I'm just checking. <laughs> hey, yes. Chad, one one of the things that Sukumel does for almost every commitment story he writes is he'll say, hey, he basically tells the kid, if you're committing to Texas, can you give me a few quotes? And I swear on the Bible, it's not, uh, nothing's coming out of my mouth. Right. I'm not ruining anything. It's just so that when the story comes out, I've got quotes. And like 90% of the time, Jason will get quotes for a commitment story, a lot of times about a week in advance. Yeah. Right. Uh, and so he'll have his commitment story sitting in our database waiting to get posted. Matter of fact, he's got a couple. I've, I think. I've still got two that have been in there for like, well, I don't know, like four months probably. So. <laughs> yes. Wow. Hey, I wrote, I've got my instant analysis piece ready to go, which I wrote on September 17th. On Wingo? Other than updating when I'm off the show today whatever rankings and all of it in, in, in the event that any of his rankings changed on any of the services, everything else is oh done my gosh. And ready to go. Yeah. I'm going to admit something that's really embarrassing right now. I've, I told you I was working on a Ryan Wingo commitment story before I came on the air with y'all. Mm -hmm. I have a Ryan Wingo commitment story loaded in our admin from September 17th that I forgot about. It's been so long. Wow. So, look at that. Really, a, a lot's record. happened since then. So I'm going to delete that one and go with the more recent Ooh. one. But yeah. You, <laughs> <laughs> How about that? I literally had to pull up our admin and catch as we're talking like, oh, crap. I've got a Wingo commitment story. For, that was the weekend that he visited Texas and he was telling people behind the scenes is going to be Texas. So I whipped up. Oh, that's right. Now it's coming back to me. And I remember messaging you catch. I'm like, Hey dude, this could happen tonight. We got to be ready Sunday night. It's been written. Yeah. And here we are a month and a week later and it's maybe <laughs> now going to happen. So. Hey, I like it. What, the funny thing is I just stowed that away. And you know, if we get the signing day, he never commits. I'll delete it. The cool thing is, as far as I can tell, hold on. I got, I might have, I've got two more here. Let's see. Which one is that one? No, nope, that's my Brandon Baker one. I wrote that one and we were good. And then I had another one for, oh, I've got a Kobe Black. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a Kobe Black 
instant analysis that I wrote on August 13th that if and when we get to that point, Jason, I'm ready to go. Just needs a little freshening up, but it'll be it'll be ready. Yeah, little little tidy <laughs> here and there, but overall, the just a little uh, behind the curtains peek uh, at how we operated <laughs> Orange Bloods, right? So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, a good Boy Scout is always prepared, yeah. and that's the the creed by by which Jason and I live by. Chad, it works. It works. All right, Jason, get out of here. Uh, you it's have the a second lead. Ryan Wingo commitment story. So. If, if anything happens between now and the next hour, feel free to just jump back in yeah, and we'll continue the yeah, dialogue. I'll... Okay. Sounds good, guys. Thanks, Thanks Jason. Jason. Right. Jason Sukumo, managing editor of orangebloods.com. <laughs> what I'm trying to imagine right now, Catch, is either Jimbo Fisher or Kirby Smart deep in a meeting. Like the room is dark. They're going over film, and somebody sticks their head in and goes, uh, Coach, Wingo just picked us. What? What did you just say? Who? Like They'll all watch, or at least somebody in the recruiting department will watch. That's what I'm saying. Somebody know. runs in to tell them, right? Uh, we have a, a few more Super Chats, and I wanted to make sure we didn't leave anybody behind. Yep. Uh, Barb says, Super Chat call back to yesterday. Chad trying to explain the difference between sexy and hot is the most aggy thing he's done this week. Yeah, I feel like I've done more Aggie things than that this week. But sometimes you need to. Sometimes just it's sometimes there's little nuances between uh, between the two. <laughs> Good example. Happy birthday, Katy Perry. Today we were just talking Katy Perry this week. Katy's thirty nine. Katy Perry, hot. A Gina Gershon in her prime, sexy, and sexier than Katy Perry. <laughs> Okay, well, you can say that's an Aggie thing or not? I'm just I don't, I don't know that that's an Aggie thing. There's no breaking, sheep involved in the making of that of that opinion. We're breaking um, it down. There's definitely no sheep involved in that opinion. If you've seen Gina Gershon, just a different level of you know, sex appeal. Hot and sex appeal are two different things. You saw that movie Killer Joe, right? Nope, never, you never saw, saw it. that McConaughey. Yeah, who's in that? Gershon. Yeah. Oh, I have not seen it. He I, makes her do a thing to a piece of chicken. And yeah, I'm I, conflicted by it in a million different ways. And I just wondered, but I'm not a Gina Gershon guy. Right. Yeah. I've never seen the movie. Uh, so I don't know. I have no opinion. Sorry. I've never revisited the movie. No. That tell, and I'm a revisit a movie guy. Yeah, it's just not one of those movies. First of all, you put the word killer in a movie. Um, I'm going to be a little wary. And if it's a little on the darker side, it's maybe not going to become my kind of movie. Maybe if the words he makes her do a thing to a piece of chicken come out of my mouth, yeah. it might be like the example of which you need to say, you know, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I didn't see that. It didn't. It didn't make it didn't make me think about going to see the movie for sure. Let me put it that way. It, my own mentioning of Gershon makes me want to go back and watch about twenty five minutes of Showgirls, but other than that, no. I like Showgirls. I think it is maybe the most underrated movie of the nineties. It's damn near a movie. It's really close. Like it's close to being actual cinema. It is one oh, of the great. Bad, it's one of the great bad movies of all time for me. Yeah. I don't even know if it's a great, it might just be a great movie. Cause sometimes I don't know. I don't even know what we shouldn't even break it down. Who cares? It's glorious. <laughs> That's what glorious. We need to know. It's glorious. If you have not made yourself watch either uh showgirls or strip tease for different reasons, you should watch both. Oh, I think feature. showgirls is levels above strip tease double feature tonight. By the way, Congressman Dilbeck says, how dare you both movies I would say are worth watching. Uh, Jay Lee says, buy or sell, regardless of who the quarterback or opponent is, each of our last four games will go down to the wire, all late fourth quarter games. I would sell that on every single one of them, but I could see like three of the five doing that. What do you, well, yeah. how do they define? The thing is, there's five games left. How are we defining late fourth quarter? If there's 12 minutes in a quarter, we're saying less than five minutes to go? Yeah, I think when I hear late fourth quarter, I think less than five minutes. Less than five in a one-score game. That's what they're saying, maybe. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'd say like three out of the five. Three out of the five will end up that way. 
I'm with you. You know, like even a year ago, I thought the Kansas State game was going to end up being close. Whew. And then I it was close. I mean, both purple, both, both purple games could be that way. And I got a weird feeling that Tech's going to be that way too. Okay, well, I'm going to say sell as well. I still think they clobbered Texas Tech. And I hope you're right. You know, I'm going to just say one of these games, they win semi comfortably. Yeah. Okay. That's but I don't think, I don't think we're going to, we're getting a blowout in any game the rest of the way out. And I gotcha. think if viewers is playing, I think the hope would be that a few of these would be very decisive wins. Uh, I don't know if we're going to see any decisive wins, but we may get to like, the fourth quarter of a game in Texas is in control, but and, boy, I, I think, I think buckle up. I think everybody needs to stay at DKR for 60 minutes uh, yeah. rest of the season. And just to clarify for you in college football, a blowout is like 21 at least. Yeah. 21 or more. Okay. That's my definition of a blowout in, in both college and pro football. Um, I don't have a clear definition. I mean, sometimes you can be beating a team by 35 and then, it ends up being like an 18 point game. So yeah. there are, it, some, it's, it's one of those things where sometimes I have my eyeballs tell me more of the story than the stat line. I got you. That's fair. Uh, we are closing in on two o'clock, which means we got the crap bag coming up. One of catches favorite things in the crap bag every week. Obviously he loves turnover Tuesday, but he also loves goodbye day. When I tell him what teams officially said goodbye to the playoff, including a massive brand name that said bye-bye this week. We'll do that. I'll give Ketch an option. He can either see it or not see it. And then we'll also talk about um, a couple uh, – we may we haven't talked the Michigan story yet. We may need to – I was going to say, do we have enough time to do Michigan before the crap bag? I think we should do Michigan in the crap bag. Okay. Right. Yeah, I think Michigan should be part of the crap bag. We'll do that as well. Real quick, though, let me talk about breathing and sleeping and snoring and sinus and snoring specialists because they are the place – that got me feeling better and resting better. They can do the same for you. That is your QR code. I've been excited about my experience since 2017. Love going to sleep every night, knowing I'm going to get a good sleep, knowing I don't have to worry about allergy stuff every year like I used to have at least a couple of bouts of that. And now I'm really excited about my wife's process because she is getting in the groove with that new CPAP machine. She gets a grade. every. My wife loves her phone. My wife's on her phone a lot. Facebook monster, always getting notifications on everything. She loves to deal with the phone. So now we figured out a way we, I say like I did it, sinus and snoring specialist has a way now because she's got an app where she follows those numbers every day. There's your QR code for sinus and snoring specialist. It may be a CPAP for you that they suggest, but it may not. CPAP never really came up in my process, but it did in my wife's process. So it's going to be different for everybody. They've got surgical and non-surgical options. The most important thing is don't let it continue to get worse. If you know you snore like a freight train, don't just let it get worse. That means you're not breathing for big hunks of time during the night. That can cause other problems. Get to resting better, feeling better, especially if you're like my wife and you get up at the butt crack of dawn every day. You got to be rested, got to feel good. And now my wife's feeling better and better each morning now that she's dealing with this uh, the right way. Sinus and snoring specialists can help you do that too. Feel clear, rested, and healthy. All right. So we're almost to two o'clock. We have five minutes, Jeff Ketchum. What would you like to discuss in those five minutes? Two things. One, can I tell you about my dream last night? Uh, oh, yes. Let's have dream analysis. We can do that in five minutes. Go ahead. I In the dream, I was trying to shave my head, but I had like a, like a real full head of hair. But okay. I was trying to shave it with a straight razor. Okay. And so a lot of the dream was just me shaving my head, but like there being like so much hair. Right. That like I just, it was hard. How long a hair are we talking about you, you had in this dream? I mean, you know, like it was, you know, I had okay. hair. It was like, yeah. it was hair. It was longer hair. I mean, long. Even probably longer hair than I ever actually had in my life. Long flowing blonde now, hair. Now, yes. Now let me tell you the second part of the dream. Okay. At one point I'm in my expedition and I'm driving down Burnett Road in Austin. 
Mm -hmm. And half of the car, including the steering wheel, disappeared. So like it was it was there, then it's gone. I mean, all I can tell you is that in the dream, I I become aware that I'm driving, I'm about to hit the Burnett Road 183 intersection. Okay. And suddenly half of the expedition is gone, like come just gone. Just gone. And it's like I'm it's open air. I don't have a steering wheel, but I was able to lean the car. Over to, you know, the bowling alley that's at 183 and Burnett Road? Uh, I do. That's Highland like, Lane, right? Yeah, we're like on the left side, you'd have the pluckers and all yep. of the stuff over there. Yep. I was able to somehow get the car over to the bowling alley parking lot without a steering okay. wheel. Okay. Those are the two that's main it. things going on. Those are the dream. Okay, so um, that's interesting. I would say the... <sighs> like the hair, it, the fact that you had the hair would probably be symbolic of something, you know, that you used to have back in the day that you would want again. Maybe you like were being a baseball team that made me happy. Maybe you're being nostalgic about that because your Phillies did win the World Series in 08 and you're, you're thinking of those days and those days are gone and the violent like cutting off of the hair probably reflects that you are a Phillies fan. So there's anger in the fact that you're not getting what you would want back in the day. Catch going Bosworth from 86. Exactly. Exactly, Cotton. And then, Catch, when the car is there and disappears. By the way, let me just double check. This expedition you're driving, is it your actual car? I mean, I think so. Okay. So now what this is, is at one moment, you're there and you're in control, but then half the car goes away, you're losing control. That is signifying the fact that at the end of game seven, you'd lost control of the season, your team had lost, and your daughter had gotten involved and felt sad. So you felt extra bad because now you've lost control of like your daughter's sports fan feelings. Like that now is headed down a path and you can't control that. So it's just all about loss of control. Now, that I know happens. that after I pulled the expedition without a steering wheel over to, into the parking lot of the bowling alley, yep. I got back to like the hotel room that we were at and I was I needed to sh finish shaving my head because uh -huh. we all had to go find the other half of my expedition. Obviously, as you do, yeah. as you do. When half your car disappears in the middle of a dream. So just to be clear, you didn't bowl a couple frames. You yeah. didn't go in and bowl. You went back to the hotel. Yes. Yeah. And and the fact that you were at a hotel tells me that you're dreaming in current time, meaning the car is current. Your living situation is current. Otherwise, you'd have driven to like your old house in the Austin area. You didn't do that. It's a hotel. It's all about now. I think this is all about also a lot of women in the dream, but my wife was my wife. And like, sometimes I dream and my wife's not in the dream at all. Last right. night she was in the dream, but so were other women. Do you think any of those women represent Trey Turner or Bryce Harper? I don't know. Did any of them swing and miss at things during the uh, dream? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was rude. I'm going to take a drink. That was rude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I went too far. Hey, before we get into crap bag, piece of crap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> before we get into the Mr. Crap bag. No um, crap bag for you. Your thoughts on Sukumel and I and the whole Wingo conversation. Like, did any of that just sound bananas? Is this 2020? I'm just curious from your perspective. Because, like, I don't want to be, like, a tease. Right. Look, I think anybody that knows us, like, we usually do a real good job of preparing people for disappointment. Like, yeah. We're yeah. not really into building your hopes and dreams up, and then you watch at 4 o'clock, and your heart gets ripped out. And it's like, waka, waka, waka. Like, you know, that's not what people want from us. So right. it, I can't remember another situation where – for a five-star recruit, two hours before he announces, both of us being so wishy-washy that Jason's like, 
I'm kind of leaning Texas, but I'm keeping my future cast in for Missouri. But if I hear something in the next 30 minutes that could change, I it, it's unusual from my perspective. Yeah, I feel like it's one of those both things can be true. Like Texas fans can understand the idea that their name, their brand, their coach, their recruiting ability could increase someone's interest right up to the point that they would make a decision. But they can also understand this kid's situation and why he might end up picking Missouri. So in the end, as much again, I'm going to hope I'm hoping for Texas fans that he picks Texas and I'm. My wacky idea is, again, that he is trying to stoke the Missouri NIL on the other side, and he'll do it by picking Texas. But deep down, I think a Texas fan right now that's watching us, they're at work, they're going through their day, deep down, they're expecting him to say Missouri. And they think maybe it went from 80-20 to 60-40, or maybe it did go to 55-45, but they think he's going to pick Missouri. That'd be my gut on most Texas fans today. There's not a single person in the entire recruiting industry that has a prediction in for Texas as things currently stand. Right. Every right. single pick is across the board Missouri. And I got to tell you, just on the personal side, I really hope he picks Georgia. Like I'm – or A&M. <laughs> Anybody but Texas or Missouri just to see – well, that would be a shocker just to see the insider world explode and to see then who ultimately wins out of Texas and Missouri if the kid does that. If Because I don't know how many of those we get nowadays, Catch, like the weird side fishing story where, okay, I'm just going to pick a random third party and I'm going to make the two big dogs I'm trying to pick between, I'm going to make them have an NIL fight. Because this is a fascinating NIL fight. You know, a team that feels like they're a lesser team in NIL, but they've got an in-state advantage. They've got a literal state law in place that is advantageous to them, whereas the Texas law does not help Texas, the bigger brand, the bigger name, the one that's got the bigger pile of money. It's fascinating. It's incredibly interesting. Yes, it is. And you know what else is interesting? Mm -hmm. It's 204. It's time for the crap bag. The first two hours of this show is not what we plan to do. No. What's Ryan so, Wingo's fault? Does that mean that we have like a show tomorrow already prepped and ready to go? Or because, you know, the Wednesday show and the Thursday show aren't always the same by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. We had a Wednesday show planned. Are we just, that's just not ever going to happen? Or are we going to do the th Wednesday show on Thursday? Uh, I mean, I, I think there's going to be eh, probably a little a little of each. I think there's one thing we probably need to mention before this hour is done because um, I did tease it a little bit in Twitter. But we'll, we'll get to that. But we, I think we do need to, as the next few weeks go by, talk about what Texas has got in front of them and what what could happen um, in terms of the Longhorns. So we will. I think we'll get to that. And uh, in a second, we'll take a look at where Texas would be if we had an extended playoff. But first catch... We did have some bye-bye teams last week. I know you oh, were holding. Out, I know you were holding out hope that Duke was going to make the the playoff. Sadly, it's over. Duke is out with their second loss of the year. Also, Tennessee losing to Bama. That's their second loss. They are out of playoff competition. And the other two, USC's out officially. No Caleb Williams in the playoff. He can go to the Heisman ceremony. Can't go to the playoff. Not with two losses. And catch the the play everybody's bitching about in this Iowa Wisconsin game. Did you catch that awful call that they made? Yes. That ultimately takes Iowa out of playoff contention. Now I know, I know, you can say they were never going to get there, but I just love the numbers. And once you get the two, you're out. They're officially out now because an official couldn't tell the difference between moving teammates around the field and a fair catch signal. It's not the so, first time that's happened, though. I mean, it, it does. Happen a few times a year. It just so happens that one cost a team a win. But you, but but I've never seen it where they wait till after the play. Usually it gets called right then. That misinterpretation has to be called right then before a, before a return. You cannot let him return it for a touchdown and then call it. How mad would Texas fans be if that was a Big Twelve officiating crew? And let's oh. say. That's how the BYU game got decided. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> exactly. That's the kind of stuff I've been thinking too about what if this was going on? What if Texas people were on the business end of this? Obviously, they got a good version of it against Houston, but there's still some weird games coming, I think, for Texas. We can all agree at Fort Worth is weird. The Tech game could get weird, even though it's in Austin. That's the very last time. That's the game your mark referenced earlier on. So there's a lot of that. So those are the bye-bye teams. Now, Catch, I'm giving you an option here. You can either choose to see it, or I'll just keep it to myself, and we can look at it later if you like. I have a list for you of all eligible Power 5 teams and all eligible G5 teams right now. All teams that have zero or one loss that can technically make the playoff right now. If you want to see it. If not, I'll just hold it and keep it. And wait till later, right? I mean, I'll just tell you this. I'm not. Are, why am I six, hating on your list? Well, no, because it just may be too many teams for you right now. It, we're at 16 power fives. This is the list. These are the teams that can make the playoff. There it is. Obviously, yeah, I'm just looking at it. Yeah, yeah. Just cruise it. Just, just take a little cruise there. I like yeah. how in the in the name of cutting syllables down for the reading audience. Yeah. You cut Oregon in half, but wrote out the word Ole Miss. Uh, yes. Instead of just Miss. Yeah, for some reason, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I do do that. I don't just write Miss for Ole Miss. I'll go, I either do Miss State or Ole Miss. Interesting. Oh, no. Yeah. It's a little, I mean, James well, Madison got... Two big old words. I just wanted to make sure you knew. If I put JMU, it might have confused me. I was just trying to make sure I was clear on all that, too. So those are the teams still still involved uh, in, in everything. Hey, r- real quick. Y- you all saw James Madison's in the top 25 this week, in the yep. AP top 25, number 25. They crept in. They Probably crept in, a little bit. and Air Force is still in, right? Air Force uh, got a win and improved their rankings. That's That's happening. And Jeff Ketchum, just to update you on the expanded playoff. If we had an expanded playoff, Texas would still be hosting a game. They would be now hosting a 7-10 matchup, and they'd be on the opposite side from Georgia. Here's your update on the expanded playoff. Texas hosts Penn State. Winner gets Michigan. Interesting. I'm sure there'd be plenty of Michigan folks in Austin watching the signals. Um, OU would host. Oregon would host. Washington would host. And there you go. And once again, Air Force is the highest ranked G5. And I'm throwing in the 12th ranked team at the bottom just to remind us, because once we get to the expanded playoff, somebody gets screwed. Some team that's ranked in the top 12 will get screwed because they're going to be inserting a G5, at least one, maybe two G5s, depending on how they want to do it. So there's your update, Texas fans. How cool would that be? Catch Norman, Austin, Washington and Oregon all hosting quarterfinals. That would be badass. Come on. That'd be good stuff. Can I make a nasty confession? Sure. I heard most of that, but I was surfing on Twitter. Yes. And our guy, Robert Latow from Black Sports Online. Yep. He posted a story and this falls into the category of it's pretty nasty. But now that I've read the story, Uh I don't want it in my brain alone. Like I, I want to share it, but it may be so foul that I should just shut up. Are we talking so foul, like bathroom stuff? Are we talking so foul sex or what are we talking about? Or just grotesque? What are we doing? As fate would have it, kind of both of those things together. Ew. Um, well. I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show better judgment. Okay. I'm going to take 15 seconds to let everybody. Look at Blake is clapping for me. Blake says, yes, well done. So instead you want to play the spec spot? Is yeah, we'll play the spec spot. It'll segue us out of my distraction. Fair enough. No matter what you're needing, Spec's same day delivery can save the day with our Specs app or online shopping. From world class wines to hard to find spirits and craft beers to gourmet foods, delicious snacks, and spectacular sweets, it's Specs. 
Cheers to savings. That is growth. That is growth. That's what happens when you have to parent your child who's going through their first sports heartbreak. Catch went through that last night with his nine-year-old daughter. That just makes you a better person. And now he's more mature. And so he'll discuss all that filth with me later, maybe off the show, and we won't be on the show. Or he was just waiting 15 seconds and he's about to say it now. I'm not. I'm no? Not. Okay. I think that I came across a story that is so – thing is, it involves – a. The thing that caught my eye was it involves a woman named Nicole Richie. Oh, yeah. Lionel's so, daughter. But it turns out the woman's name is Whitney Nicole Richie. Oh, uh, different person. I don't think it's that Nicole Richie. Gotcha. So the whole reason why I clicked on the story was because I was like, I don't know, think I've heard Nicole Richie's name in like a decade. So now it's so, not her. No. And then it turns out it's a different woman. And if you want to know why Whitney Nicole Richie is in the news, look her up. Just go to bso.com. I'm I'm sure this is Yeah, no, I'm looking right now. Oh god. The the NBA is back. Because you've oh, got yeah. that, you've got the Dwight Howard story. Yeah. When, Had you seen that when I texted you that yes, earlier? Yes. Wow, that is a wild story for those that missed it. Dwight Howard is denying a sexual assault allegation. He says that the situation was consensual. But then you start reading through the story, and very quickly you see the accuser is a man. No, I mean, Dwight Howard has weirdly come out as gay. He has? I mean, based on the story... Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, gotcha. You know, yeah. no, he hasn't announced. Right. He hasn't officially publicly. done that, but he's willing in this case to, he's willing in his mind to fight back against this thing. And if everybody finds out what I just said, he says, so be it. He's going to fight for the idea, for his reputation that this was a consensual act and it was not an assault. And he says that uh, this guy's just trying to get money from him. So we'll see where that one goes. That it's was one expected that story because today. if Dwight Howard comes out as gay, I think a lot of the mainstream reaction in 2023 is well, right on for you, Dwight Howard. Like, live your life and you know, don't don't be afraid of not being able to express yourself. And like, there's no, from my perspective, certainly there's like no negative, like, okay, so cotton. Cotton. Come on now. Well, here's something I didn't know reading up on Dwight Howard. Did you know he's a multiple kids, multiple woman guy? I did know that, yes. Yeah, at one point, I think it was nine with nine different women. I mean, it may, it sounds like Dwight might just be into everything. Yeah, right. I was going to say, Dwight Howard just might be up for whatever you have thought up. Which is a whole new level of openness. Like, I don't know that I'm ready to know this much about Dwight Howard. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. And, and the fact that, that story is number two on BSO. And look, I I can't even give you the headline of the story that I read That's other good. than to say it involves pink eye. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. I see. I see. Okie doke. Fair enough. Um, all right. So sadly, we have a situation where the crap bag is the nicer oh. bag. <laughs> And then you do that. Okay, fair enough. To where we're going. That's the sad part, right? Uh, that the, the the crap bag segment might be the nicer path. A um, couple other quick things. Did you see? I know you're you're somewhat. I mean, the crap so bag you, actually sounds like a perfect place for the pink eye story. That's that true. Could be, I could was be. reading. Did you hear oh. about John Jones' uh, latest injury? He's out of the pay-per-view. Yeah, he's out of the fight with Miocic in November. Tore a pec tendon off the bone. Mm. According to Dana White, eight-month injury. We were all looking forward to that big heavyweight fight. John Jones really trying to establish himself as maybe the best that ever did it because Miocic is maybe the best heavyweight that's ever been by certain uh, marks. So there's there's a chance we never get that fight now? There's definitely a chance. I think we never get it. Dana's still trying to tell us that 2024 at some point. But John Jones, if his first fight after that is that fight, 
feels like a built-in excuse for like, well, that fight didn't count because yeah. months off of tearing his pec. That's yeah. That's no, it's, it's a, that's wild. I, I'm, I'm disappointed to hear it, but um, there you go. John Jones on the shelf for a while. Also a very crap bag kind of uh, fact here. Catch. Did you know we could have two army Navy games every year moving forward? No. Is yeah, there, they're both in the same conference now, and Army is going to join championship game. Yep, Army's going to join the AAC, but they will still play their annual game as a non-con. Meaning, if both are the best in the AAC, they'll play one week for the title, and then they'll turn right around and go to Philly the next week and play the game we all know. So, just there you go. We could have two Army Navy games coming up. How about that? Uh, what so do you there you have it. Are of that ever happening? Oh, extremely low. Are you okay. kidding? I just wanted to make sure we were on the same page. Extremely low. We're talking about Army replacing SMU in this conference because they're headed to the ACC. Very rare. Very rare that Army and Navy would be the two best teams in the ACC at the same time. But technically, it could happen. All right. So, catch the other thing I guess we could mention here. We referenced it earlier a little bit. But um, the Michigan – sign stealing story are you at the are you just enjoying it for the pure comedy are you taking it seriously or a little bit of both like where where are you on the sign or do you not care at all and you don't think it should even be discussed no i'm definitely i'm caught in between places um i'm fascinated by like the thing that you continue to hear is that the big 10 can make like they don't they they can do something to Michigan now. Yep. If they want to and they feel like they've got the goods, then they could just render they could take they could strip Michigan of all their wins. And Michigan's out of the playoff. Yeah. I think the answer is slightly simpler than that. They won't do what I'm about to suggest, but I think they can do it. They're allowed catch a $10,000 fine which everybody's been making fun of. But they're also allowed a maximum two-game suspension. And I think it's really easy. Harbaugh can't coach the Penn State game. Harbaugh can't coach the Ohio State game. They have proof that they went against NCAA rules and recorded those two teams when they played because they're future opponents. Tell them they can play. Don't take wins. Tell them they can still get to the playoff. But your guy, the captain of your ship, who should have known whether he says he did or not, we're not going to even give him the opportunity to lie to us. He's not on the sideline for either game. I think that, A, A, it's appropriate, and B, it's, it would send your message. You want to send a message? You want to protect a couple of your institutions? I would protect Penn State and I'd protect Ohio State by doing exactly that. Harbaugh, Harbaugh has to watch it with you and me. Is that enough? I mean, I mean, there are people make- who are describing this as like the sanctity of the sport is on the line here, and that you've got to protect the sport, the integrity of the sport, the integrity of the competition. That, and look, I don't. I my first thought on this was, and you and I discussed this on the phone. There's a lot of people who, when they heard about this story, thought to themselves. It's a big deal. I played high school football and our high school coaches would go and scout teams in person all the time. And then, and then there was the, well, this rule is in place because poor schools don't have the means to send people all over the country traveling to scout people in person. So it's about the haves and the have nots operating on the same platform. Right. But what is alleged to have happened is so different than like, hey, there's Coach Smith and Coach Johnson up in the 17th row, like taking notes on the spread. Like this is a guy getting into a position to record signs, signals, all of that stuff, and then and then potentially using that in a way. I, I don't know how I feel about this story. It is, to me, it is very it's a cousin to the Astro story to me. They, they made up a rule and said, you can't do X. 
they took that idea, they took that and said, we're going to do X and we're going to do even more than X. That's essentially what this is. It just involves sort of other games. To me, it's pretty gross. I don't dig it. Did you hear Dion's comments? Because I think he's full of it. Uh, yeah. Deion Sanders basically said, hey, you still got to stop it. You could get their whole game plan. You still got to stop. If you know a sweep's coming, it's not like knowing there's a curveball coming in baseball. Okay, Prime, then stop hiding all your signals. Send your next game plan to your opponent. Are you serious? Why don't you call it out? Have your have your son shout out to the defense. We're going sweep left. Set hut. You're not going to do that. Stop it. Stop acting like this is nothing. It's not nothing. That's and then the other argument catch we'll get is the one I've gotten from all my Astros friends and family, you know, the fan friends, whatever it is. The, all the Astros people, everybody does it, Chad. You tell me everybody doesn't do it. We don't know that everybody did it. We know you did it. We know the league told you not to do it, and you did it on a higher level. If you want to keep on with this crap about, yeah, they're all doing it. If you're not cheating, you're not enjoy-. Okay. If you're not cheating, you're not trying, and you breaking the rule are two different things. The rule was in place in 1994, catch. That was back when people didn't know Joe Paterno was a dirtbag yet. That was a long time ago. Well, and we're at this point now where the Harbaugh side of this is probably the most interesting thing to me because we're entering Art Bryles territory in the sense that he's going to maintain that he didn't know anything about it. Right. And the way this has been set up, and I've even seen, you know, I've seen stories that were written that suggest that there was always an intentional divide between what was happening and Harbaugh so that he could always claim some deniability in all of this. And it's like, really? Because yeah. in the game, that guy's literally communicating. There's video of him talking to Harbaugh. <laughs> right. The no- in yeah, games. The- Yeah, the notion that he's planning all those trips without Harbaugh's knowledge is absolutely crazy. And just so happens that he's going to SEC title games and he's checking out SEC teams. By the way, love the irony that he didn't go to a TCU game and TCU beat him. That's fantastic. Shout out to the Frogs for that one. But, you know, maybe... They they played somebody a couple of weeks ago and they interviewed the coach at halftime. And I can't remember what game it was or what coach... Do you remember this? Uh uh-uh. uh. The and opposing the coach, coach like, made a reference. The coach alleged that there was something funny going on with the game and the proceedings, but that he couldn't get into it. Interesting. Yeah. You don't usually get some of that. You don't really get a lot of that stuff. Remember, Jimbo Fisher had one early. Remember the Miami AM game? Jimbo came out of it talking about signs getting stolen or. That was the signal, the weird signal thing, or the, the he was accusing Miami of stuff. You usually don't see that, but I missed that that story with Michigan. Well, and the mainstream thought, I think, amongst a lot of fans, I think the the prevailing thought is, dude, if you get your signals stolen, that's on you. Hide your signals better, right? Yeah. Here you and go, Ken. From ben. there it is. Benji says the Rutgers uh, head coach during halftime against Michigan said that on TV. Yeah, it was weird. I think you and I were even – we talked about it briefly, if I'm not mistaken, on one of our – but it was so weird, and none yeah. of this had popped up yet, that it was just like, hey, Rutgers is losing 21 to nothing at halftime, and the coach said that, and that was kind of weird. Right. And I yeah. just think how bitter and angry are Big Ten coaches about this? Yeah, I would assume I, I would assume they're a little salty. I tried to put this in our situation, in our lap. What would Texas fans do? What would the Orange Bloods message board look like if the Big 12 was doing an investigation on OU for this exact thing? Like, think this through. Oklahoma Texas people, fans think that Switzer did this once upon a time. Oh, right. Yeah, the guy, right, the famous person with the binoculars up on the, the, the bridge and everything. But if the conference reached out to everybody and said, hey, y'all better watch out if you got Oklahoma on your schedule coming up because we think they did this and this and this, and Texas fans would know, oh, my God, it affected that game, 34-30. Yeah, it may have. So 
I think Texas fans would flip out. And I think they'd be perfectly within their right to flip out, which is why I keep going back to if I'm Penn State or Ohio State fans, it's too late for everybody else. But everybody that's on that schedule moving forward, you got to make a you got to make some kind of statement. And maybe it's like Coach Harbaugh, either you sit for those two games or your team forfeits those two games. We have proof that you cheated to to better yourself against these teams. We're not going to ask you the question because you'll lie to us and we'll have to punish you more. So here's your choice. Either you sit or they sit. What do you want to do? And then hopefully Harbaugh will step up, drink a glass of milk and say, all right, fine, I'll sit. And he'll let his team play. That's what they should do. But I bet the Big Ten will back down because the because Michigan is one of their it's one of their dogs. Uh this comment, we were pissed when Jared Wiley told TCU our signals. You know, the allegations from last year's TCU game go deeper than that. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I don't want to get into too much. There's no proof whatsoever, but like other than there seemed to be some suspicions that TCU knew exactly what Texas was going to do. I actually never heard Jared Wiley's name specifically connected to any of that. Uh, but potentially there was a former Texas player. Like at the end of the day, there there was some thought that last year's TCU Texas game wasn't on the up and up. But again, so what does that mean? This is this is cheating. And it's right. cheating in a game, right? You're using what you you've you've acquired literally in a game, so that like you see a signal and you're like immediately able to tell your defense, run, run, run. If Michigan's five and two right now, hey, take your time. We'll figure this out. And even if it's after the season, right. you'll get dished out punishment. What are they, number two in the country? I right. mean, here they may be the best team in the country. Yeah. And they're but here's another thing. We haven't seen a lot of Michigan football this year. The, I don't think most of the nation has watched a lot of Michigan because they haven't played anybody who's competitive. So they've right. been kind of out of sight, out of mind. What if this was Ohio State? And we'd watched Ohio State barely beat Notre Dame and then survive Penn State last week. And we'd heard that this was an Ohio State deal. I think we'd look back and go, well, maybe that was the difference between them winning that game against Notre Dame or maybe winning this weekend against. But we haven't been in that place yet with Michigan. Like, does it need to be? It, it, does it need to be that though? Does it need to be they beat Rutgers twenty eight to twenty seven, and that would make people think versus forty nine nothing? Like, I don't is it think that? it should, but I think it does. It affects the way people think about the game, right? It affects the way you, the way you kind of like go back to Patriots Rams in that Super Bowl. It's a damn close Super Bowl, right? It was a three point game, and then what do we come to find out? Oh, one team was. Filming the walkthrough of the other team, which is not like an express rule that was written down, but every coach and player in the history of that league knows that's what you don't do. They know you clear the building for the other team. The Patriots didn't do that. So it feels different when it's a three-point game. Michigan stomping people. So it doesn't matter, which would also lead me catch to the idea of like, if you are Michigan, this is what you're wasting your time on? Well, yeah. look, and this is this, you know what? This is a really interesting point here because we've joked about this as recently as like the last week when right. Mike Leach left the fake offensive script that Texas found. Right. Texas using that script is cheating. Now, Absolutely. Hey, they shouldn't have left it on the bench. They shouldn't have dropped it, whatever. It's still but, cheating. It is, but they didn't send someone to Norman to break into his house to get it. But I it think that there's a sense that everybody's cheating in some way. This is not how I feel. Right. But I do think there's a sense that because everybody's cheating, there are various ways to cheat, varying degrees of cheating. Right. And I think. 
it may be in such blurry lines for some people that like there's no difference between what coach, you know, luring the Texas staff into, into trying to cheat versus the levels that Michigan apparently is going to in the name of cheating. So here's the contrast for me. The moment Tom Herman and those other GAs grabbed that fake script in 99, there is no NCAA rule to govern what they're about to do. There is an NCAA rule to govern what Michigan did. That's the difference. They yeah, literally the fans don't care about the NCAA rules. I get that. I get that. And some baseball fans didn't care about the rule that they that they put on the wall that Pete Rose broke. But if it's a rule, to me, that makes it a different discussion. It's specific to something. You don't do this. Now you've broken the rule. You're right. They don't respect those NCAA things, just like Astros fans. Some Astros fans don't respect Major League Baseball's rules because everybody was doing it. Come on, Chad. They all do it. Or they, they just picked on the Astros. Whatever. But when the rule's in place, that's where it feels different to me. They, clear, they walked across a clearly defined line. And also, it matters to me, Catch, that two things are in this story. The brand of Michigan and the brand of Harbaugh. And see, both- now this is where I think my strongest hot take comes into play. Because I, I just think it's – I think that's a despicable element to this thing. Both I, of those are both those names are supposed to mean something, and I think they've – to me, they will both be – they're both going to feel less to me from now on. Neither of those entities get to get to bow up much anymore when it comes to integrity after something like this. I think you've got to suspend Harbaugh for a year. And I don't know if Harbaugh sticks around long enough to get suspended for a year, but this is multiple strikes now against Jim Harbaugh with regards to A, following rules, B, being honest about the rules. And unless Harbaugh very quickly does an an about face and says, okay, you know what? Yes, yes. Yes, this is what we've been doing. Other than other than just literally throwing himself on the sword now, we're talking about a guy who's a repeat lying offender with regards to NCAA rules, and I don't think you can have that. I think, you know, and this is, was already a guy that, you know, was what was the status at the beginning of the year that he was going to miss the first four games or they were talking about a four or five. And then the NCAA pulled that back and said, we got to do more investigations. And then the big 10, I believe, or, or the university was it Michigan yeah, it was the university, Michigan stepped up and said, okay, it's going to be three. And obviously it was the first three garbage games of the year. And that, that was their decision. So technically there's still an investigation going on about the illegal recruiting stuff during COVID and the fact that he lied to him about it. I, you just can't have a dirty coach. And right now, Harbaugh's coming across as a dirty coach. And I do think you're right. Michigan is one of these institutions that in general likes to think of themselves as above the dirty tax. They look down at Ohio State. Right. They, they like to think of Ohio State the way Texas looks down at Oklahoma. Right? We yes. have our little white house at the top of the hill with a white picket fence and those heathens. That's right. On the in another state, all they do is cheat. All they do is break the rules. They have and, to. And, and we are bastions of yeah correctness and academics first, and not putting football uh, uh, for, uh, ahead of like selling our souls. And it feels like Jim Harbaugh has been selling some souls. Yeah, this is an interesting chat here, catch on the subject. There's proof, but it's water under the dam now. But is it? Is that how you look at it? Just because the games have passed or whatever? Like, Because the dude literally had tickets last weekend. <laughs> right? There, there, were seats un, there were seats that weren't filled for the Ohio State-Penn State game last Saturday. And the only reason he didn't go is because he knew the investigation was happening and he had – Swipe, oh, swiped. He had wiped his Twitter and and social media accounts clean because this was happening. Like, like yeah, it was up at that point. It's dirty. It's grimy, and it it it's it's you just don't want it. Catch just like 
you know, we didn't want to find out all the stuff that's now been found out about Schimbeckler. Ironically, the guy who taught Harbaugh everything he knows, right? We found out Schimbeckler was a different kind of monster than we would have thought. And the Michigan people don't get to really talk about him the same way. Because, you know, he let the team doctor abuse his players and said nothing about it years ago. That's the guy that Jim Harbaugh worships. And now he's doing this stuff, not to that degree. It's not that world, but it's not, it doesn't have integrity. It doesn't have morality behind it. It doesn't have scruples. So save all your Jack Harbaugh's in the basement cranking on film so he can tell John and, and Jim what they should do next week. I'm done hearing about how brilliant the Harbaugh's are outside of maybe John and how much he should be letting Justin Tucker kick balls. Outside of that, I don't need to hear about how the Harbaugh's are better than everybody. I don't think John and Jim are so different in my estimation. Jim's the crazy one. Right. Like, yeah, Jim, Jim. like this, this, nothing about Jim Harbaugh surprises me. Yeah, you're right. He was the attempted drowner, and it was John that would have been the drowny if somebody hadn't gotten to Jim and let him let go at the beach that day. John may be in the ground right now. Yeah. Had their mom not been nearby when Jim was drowning John. That's not my story. That's John Harbaugh's story. Yeah, and he tells it with a smile. He tells it with a laugh. Yeah, he's like, oh, my brother almost drowned me once. And the only thing, I was literally on the cusp of drowning, and our mom caught us, and she stopped him. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I like, don't know. Maybe he's certifiably crazy, man. So I'll, I'll also, let's put it this way, Catch. If number one and number two end up meeting for the natty, do you think Kirby Smart and Georgia fans care about this story today? What are they saying? Well, so far, they asked Kirby about it, and, and Kirby was like, you know, I can't say that there was anything in our game that gave me an inclination that anything <laughs> – since right. we, we beat them so bad that right. there's no reason for us to be suspicious. Yeah, he gets to say – right, you get to and, – and again, back to the game itself. He gets to say that because it was 65-7. What if the game had ended 28-24? Would he still no, say exactly. the same thing? Right? Would he still say the same thing? And well, I think that's where Dion, where yeah. his response, it's like, oh, you get to say that when you're not the victim of the crime. Right. But it, it's just, I don't know. That, and the Dion's argument's so weird to me. We can all agree that if somebody hot last night, if a Diamondback pitcher hollers out, is what you wish would have happened, hollers out curveball, that Bryce Harper gets to drive one into the seats. But Dion's telling me it doesn't matter if I know there's a sweep coming on the next play? Are you crazy? Well, look, I've been a part of covering many of Texas games. Maybe even one last week where it's like, man, it felt like they knew the plays in advance. Well, what if they did know the plays in advance? What if they – Right. They, you know, and, and, and the thing is, it's so hard because – yeah, I bet Michigan scouted. You know, I bet beyond th that, they watch film. They have sheets of tendencies, right? So on, on any play third and 10, when they line up in uh, 11 personnel, like 55% of the time, they do this. Um, yeah. I, I watched a Liverpool match Saturday morning where Mo Salah was about to kick a penalty kick. And – the goalkeeper for Everton on his water bottle had penalty notes on the water bottle written on them where it showed if depending on who was taking the penalty, what percentage of penalties they've taken have uh, gone in which directions. Interesting. Okay. I would have never thought of that, but that's a good idea actually. So uh, no, it is like, so yeah. everybody's trying to get an advantage. Sure. It is the rub on this story is that everybody acknowledges that everybody in the game, every school, every coaching staff, everybody's got hired people to watch other teams, to pick up tendencies, to know about the opponent as much as humanly possible going into a game. This is doing that, but it's breaking a rule in the process of doing that. Whereas you can watch film, and if you pick something up, if you notice that the left tackle 
Right. Puts his foot at a 45 degree angle on pass plays, but is, you know, straight up 90 degrees. If it's, it, these are things yeah. that we accept as, hey, that's the way the game's played. I think that attitude, though, is more prevailing with this story than I'm comfortable with. Right. It's like, there's too much. Well, you still got to stop them, or this is all teams are doing this. And I think you're right. But there is a rule, and everybody understands the rule, and they deliberately broke the rule. Right. And we can say, look, I don't like slowing down to below 20 miles an hour all the time when a school zone's going on. It's like, wait a minute. School's been in session since eight o'clock, it's 8 30 in the morning. I don't want to slow down below 20 miles an hour, but I know it's a thing. I saw the light. And no matter how much, well, everybody speeds, no matter, you know, school's been in session for 30 minutes. It's not really a school zone. Like you can try to like tell whatever you need to tell yourself to go to sleep. It's still a rule that was broken. It's still a law that was broken. And we still live in a country where there's supposed to be, you know, problematic outcomes for those of that that lie steep, uh, steep. That's cheat and 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 steal together. Together. That's what Harbaugh's doing. He was steating. He was steating and then some. He was steating it. All right. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, we're at the steating part of the show. Uh -huh. Um. You know, hey. I um. I tell you what, before before we start to head towards the uh, the exit, you why don't can we feel a, me heading for the exit. Why don't we head a little uh, little mojo insurance here as they uh, as they're heading out the door and get ready for football with friends? Tell them about mojo insurance and uh, what they can do for them. Well, it's a little bit like Jim Harbaugh, except it's not Steeton. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna fill out your information on like a form. You go to mojoinsurance.agency or you scan that QR code. You fill out a few things and then they. Like you might have insurance with farmers. They're going to try to find out without farmers knowing about it, whether or not you can save money somewhere else. And then if you can, they'll let you know. And then once you know that you can save money going somewhere else, you have a decision to make. Do I go with Mojo? Do I save a little bit of money? Do I use that money to go do anything that I want or do I stay? Like the decisions that we have to make in life. The bottom line is a lot of times I know when I signed up for insurance, my wife has, you know, takes care of all of that. I have no idea whether or not it's the best deal I can get. That's what Mojo Insurance does. They make sure you know there's no other deal out there better than the one that you have. And if there is, they educate you about it. It's as simple as that. They shop with over 50 A rated carriers. They're just looking to get you the best deal possible scan that qr code go fill out the form over at mojoinsurance.agency it's really as simple as that all right so before we get out of here catch you said that you wanted to go through the philadelphia phillies video one more time would you like to see <laughs> yes the fans let's one see what more people time. got to say we had a whole field for two games two games and you let them come here and beat us phillies need to sell trade turn that guy's a fucking idiot we went farther without that guy the Phillies, honestly. Trade the whole fucking team. This team fucking blew today. I want to say that I'm fucking depressed. I had to ask nine people for this fucking cigarette. Philly fans, we always stink. This Disappointment. Yeah. Oh, man, that was just straight garbage. This sucks. I hope they never fucking play a baseball game again. Swing. Fire Topper. Topper. What's up, man? Feeling like I want to go lay in traffic. Fuck all them bitch ass motherfuckers. I couldn't get a hit when we mother. Um, I love how we spent 700 mil for guys to go 0 for 12 combined. Let's go Jets. Fuck! That's a good point. I'm, I'm feeling good because, you know, we still got the birds. Go Birds! <laughs> go Birds! Hit the fucking ball, man. Come on, really? Yeah. Hit the fucking ball. Overpaid animals. Fuck that. Hey, wait, where'd you get this banana? From a homeless guy. Hey, how do we feel about <laughs> dancing on my own as a song moving forward? You gotta cut it. Time to retire it. Find something new. Still fires up the crowd. Well, I'm pretty sure it, it didn't work this year, so it's gotta go. Who fucking on? I'm crying instead of dancing! I get the shitty ass fucking song. They need to ditch that shit. I don't want to hear that song ever again. How about you it's shut it's up? <laughs> All right, so there's a lot. 
there's a lot of things we could go to after that. So help me out. Dancing on my own. Like, what is that? I don't know that song. It's like the official, unofficial club song. Like they played it in the clubhouse after victories. Okay. And then it turned into a thing where like you're playing it in the arena because it's like, you know, remember like Journey's Don't Stop Believing became like an anthem for the White Sox or whatever it was. Right. The Giants grabbed it because they're they were a San Francisco band and yeah. This is a little bit like that. This is was their version of Don't Stop Believing. Gotcha. Have you heard what music the Rangers are into? You know what my Rangers are really into? Have you heard this? No. They're into Creed. Why? I'm not exactly sure the story, but somewhere, I think, on this late road trip, like the force to go out to Tampa, whatever, long plane rides, somebody got into Creed. So they like to play Creed in the clubhouse. Is Creed Are, still a thing? Like, do they tour? Do people still no. claim Creed? I don't know about claiming Creed. No, I'm not sure. But it's like, I don't know. They just decided, let's find some music that everybody can sort of uh, agree on or maybe not fight over. And uh, Creed ended up being the winner. Whatever works. Whatever works. I hope four more games of Creed results in four more wins. I'm looking All at right. Creed's discograph- discography. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot to it. There's the band members. They haven't put out an album. They only put out four albums in all. Interesting. Okay. 1997, 1999, 2001, 2009. Boom. That's it. Yeah. I know there was like big, I know there's big hunks of like the broken up and stuff like that. Yeah. I was a little surprised to see that Creed had come back for a baseball team, but hey, whatever works, whatever gets you going. No, that all seems right. lame. All right. Yeah. I know that's not good. Yeah, no, like, yeah, Creed sounds like the band that would be doing like a Cowboys Thanksgiving Day halftime show. Yep, yep, that's it. I'm telling you, they're trying to keep that magic in Arlington. All right, football with friends coming up at 3.30. And remember, 4 o'clock is the Ryan Wingo decision. Maybe a little discussion that could be uh, could be some Texas, but most thinking it's going to be Missouri. But make sure you're right here on Orange Bloods Live at 4 o'clock for that decision and the discussion tonight on the outsiders cedric griffin scheduled to join us at 9 15 so chance and cedric griffin going to catch up tonight and then uh, we'll talk some football with him and we may catch describe uh, discuss a little cedric griffin v emmanuel Acho on social media did you catch any of that story over the week no apparently emmanuel Acho told caleb williams on television that he thought Caleb maybe needs to just shut it down. And I think know about, about all of that. Where does Cedric come into play? Apparently, Cedric Griffin was not happy about that and went at him on social media. They had some back and forth, and apparently Cedric may have called into question just how much Emmanuel Acho thought of his teammates versus how much he thought of Emmanuel. And so, yeah, they they got a little it got a little saucy. So we might ask wow. Cedric about that tonight. Wow, yeah. Longhorn on Longhorn crime. Exactly. So we got to find out where that is. 9.15 tonight on The Outsiders. All right. You got anything else or are we good? I'm good, man. I'm He's done. good. He got through the whole show and he didn't tell me about that filthy story from Black Sports Online. He'll have to send that one to me separately. We thank you for... Do you uh, want me to send that to you separately? Yeah. No, you send it to me. That way I can uh, you, I can look at it. Or you not being a dirty it. individual is one of the reasons why I like you. There you go. Absolutely. You can send it along. You can send it along real quick. Quick, a couple super chats. Let's get these in. Okay. Stanley, 199 says he's going to Texas. Stanley, we will hope so. For your sake and the sake of all Longhorn fans, we will hope that Ryan Wingo is indeed going to Texas. And this one catch is 999 from Jason. This stretch defines Sark's ability as a head coach at Texas. If Sark is a good coach, he should still win these games against lesser rosters, but nothing in Sark's history suggests he can. Double this emoji from Jason. Okay, Jason. We appreciate that 990. Sorry we didn't get to that earlier. I must yes. have missed those. Terribly sorry. We marked it, but we were talking about stuff, and then we had Sukumel on and things got going. So we thank you all for your super chats. Thanks to Specs for the uh for helping obviously with the, the chat line, specsonline.com. Check them out. Thanks to Blake, the super producer, for getting it all done today. And remember, tomorrow on a Thursday show, 120, we always try to give you your Brian Jones 
for the week? Will he swear? I hope so. Will he do the yell leader stuff? Maybe. Will he even be in the shot because he sets his video up right? We have no idea. That's at 120 every Thursday. You want to be here for that. Plus all the other stuff that you know we, we are known for. Thank and you. We, yeah, there is other stuff. Other stuff. All Our charm stuff. and wit and sense of humor. Texas and BYU prep. What did Ryan Wingo say today at 4 o'clock? We'll get into all that until tomorrow at high noon. Have a good one. We are house.